Using my Barclay card forward credit card to pay for the stuff I need now and paying back on time could help build up my credit score for the day I need something bigger. So buying weights for my workout, smashed it, or a set of headphones could help in the future when I buy my first car. Now that's forward thinking. Check if you're eligible at barclaycard.co.uk. 33.9% APR representative variable subject to application financial circumstances and borrowing history. T's and C's apply. Responsible use of a credit card can help build your credit score when you pay on time. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Land Rover. Here wherever and whenever you need them. Visit them in store or online. It's game day and this is the home of Scottish football. It's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Good afternoon and welcome to Clyde One Super Scoreboard. A bumper Saturday with both Celtic and Rangers in action at the same time. Ange Postacoglu's side host Aberdeen while Michael Beale takes his men to Livingston. There's also Hibs against Kilmarnock. Dundee United taking on St Johnson and St Mirren at home to Ross County. I'm Andrew McLean. Joining me in the studio today is Hugh Keevans, Mark Wilson and Gordon DL. And we'll call it simultaneous Saturday, Andrew, I think. Super Scoreboard takes you to two places at one time from West Lothian to the east end of Glasgow no comedy acts just the serious business of the championship one week before you know who play you know where for you know what big games big names today unless your name happens to be O and we are all over all of them using what Gordon Dale knows as the powers of bilocation you know, I'm looking forward to today Andrew because <laughs> It's quite unusual we get Rangers and Celtic kicking off the same time on a Saturday when we are live on air. So intriguing day ahead and all the fixtures in between. Plenty of intrigue in the ones at the bottom of the table and that middle of the table as well, bunching up nicely. So big day ahead. With the guys, strap yourself in. I think we'll get plenty of goals, plenty of action, plenty of excitement. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this afternoon's card. Yeah, I think the last time Celtic and Rangers both played in separate games at three o'clock on a Saturday was back in September 2020. It was during lockdown season as well, yeah. so things were very different then. So it should be an interesting dynamic today with both teams in action. If I remember that day well, Andrew, Rangers scored five? Four. Four Celtic nil win against five. Dundee United Celtic and Celtic scored, scored five. five. So it was 9 mil on aggregate. You'd uh, settle for that today if you were Ange Postacoglu and Michael Beale, but somehow I think it'll be tighter than that from West Lothian to the East End. Well, five big Premiership games to keep you up to date with and of course we'll let you know what's happening all around the grounds in Scotland as well and then come five o'clock it's the open line 01419511025 we'll want to hear from you then but plenty of action to happen before then let's go let's go to Celtic Park shall we Gabriel Antoniazzi has the build up Thanks, Andrew. Yes, eight wins in a row for Celtic. They are cruising at the top of the league at the moment, trying to maintain their advantage over Rangers, with both teams, of course, playing at the same time this afternoon. Michael Beale says nine points is a big gap, but Cameron Carter-Vick has told us yesterday that it isn't. Expect the Hoops to go all out here as they aim to continue their free scoring form. They're, of course, totally focused on Aberdeen today. They'll still want to be flying going into next week's League Cup final against Rangers at Hampden. Big team news here as well, coming from the Celtic changing room. Kyogo was passed as fit yesterday by Ange Postacoglu, which is a huge relief to the Celtic supporters everywhere. Of course, he came off early last weekend with a shoulder injury. However, he is only fit enough for the bench today. He is one of three changes from that 5-1 win against St Mary in the Cup last week. Uh, Aaron Moy and David Turnbull drop out entirely. As I said, Kyogo is on the bench. O oh, makes his first start for the club. He leads the line up top. A huge chance for the Korean, whilst Hitate and O'Reilly come back into the midfield. I'll give you the full 11 now. It's Joe Hart in goal. Back four of Alta Johnson, Cameron Carter, because Carl Starfelt and Greg Taylor. Captain Callum McGregor at the base midfield with Rayo Hitate and Matt O'Reilly either side of him. Jota and Dyson Maida are on the wings. O oh, leads the line. Bain Hacks, Ivanovic, Abada, Kobayashi, Kyogo, Iwata, Bernabe, Ralston and Forrest are the substitutes. Well, what about the visitors here today? The Dons are up 
managed by former Celt Barry Robson. Of course, he's in interim charge of the club as they look for their next permanent boss. Robson's only been in charge of two matches, one win and one loss. But he did have a free week seven days ago due to their early Scottish Cup exit. Perhaps the spare time on the training ground will have given him time to get his ideas across. Will we see improved results on the pitch this afternoon? There's only one change from their 3-1 victory over Motherwell last time out. Liam Scales cannot play against his parent club, so Jack McKenzie comes into the left-hand side of defence. It's a 3-5-2 formation for the Dons. Jay Gorter in goal. Back three of Matthew Pollock, Angus McDonald and Jack McKenzie. Matty Kennedy is right wing back with Johnny Hayes on the left. Ilba Ramadani and Graham Shinney are at the base midfield with Leighton Clarkson just in front of them. And the two leading the line are Bojan Miofsky and Duke. Substitutes, Lewis, Markande, Mislovic, Watkins, Polvara, Coulson, Duncan, Richardson and Roberts. The referee here in Glasgow is Willie Collum. The VAR is Alan Newlands. Yeah, a few interesting pieces of team news there from Celtic Park. I think the, the headline one, Hugh, would be the yeah. fact that Kyogo does not start. He had some fitness issues after the last game, a shoulder injury. Ange Postacoglu did play it down, but does that seem like the sensible choice with such a big game next weekend? I would describe it as the intriguing choice. I think the fans already like the look of O. Uh, he got his first goal for the club against St Mirren in the Cup last Saturday. Uh, he has looked promising the game before that the way he rolled Considine up at uh, Perth and gave Celtic the free kick from which David Turnbull scored the fourth goal I think it's an intriguing one I think Kyogo is in no doubt of his place at Hamden but it's intriguing for the fans to see O from the start and let me get it off my chest right away I do not understand why Willie Collum who's had a shocking season and who has made mistake after mistake is put in charge of the game of the day in Scotland. It baffles me. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get on to referees as the day goes on. Mark, talking about O, it's a huge opportunity for him, isn't it? It certainly is. Um, young player who's came to the country and made an immediate impact, you've got to say. And, you know, you've got to remember, he, he's been surrounded by the whole Jackie Marcus debacle as well. You know, he would have been well aware are the shoes that he has to fill and what Jackie Mack has meant to the Celtic fans. That can bring him about his own pressures, but got to see it every time I've seen him, he does look impressive. Now, he's got the opportunity from the start today against uh, an Aberdeen side who have struggled to keep clean sheets this year. I think it's a cautious choice from Ange Postacoglu. One eye next week, knows he's got Kyogo on the bench if things aren't going right, but... I like the look of this this boy. Oh, I think he, he'll do a good turn for Celtic I think, this afternoon. I think, I think it's a good selection in the case of when you come to a new club, the f- especially as a centre forward, most important thing, get your first goal. Go up and run and get that, get that off your back. Get that goal. That gives you the confidence. I think it's a great bit of timing for him because he'll be desperate to go out there home against Aberdeen, decent side, big crowd. Um, so I think you're about there to prove what he's all about and uh, as I say the goal has given him so much confidence he'll be looking for opportunities and he'll be looking for an R1 today We'll need to hear what Ange Postacoglu says whether it's before the game or after the game about Aaron Moy but he's not in the squad whatsoever Mark will that be yeah. a concern for Celtic fans with a cup final a week away and just given the form he's been in over the last couple of well, months Well not a concern for today because they've got that much quality uh, Riley just comes back in so no problem there quite unusual there may be a number of reasons maybe he's just rested maybe he's got something else in the background that he needs to sort out how many times have we heard that if he was injured surely Ange Postacoglu would have come out yesterday because he said Turnbull, was, said injured Turnbull was injured but he injured. didn't mention yeah. so, so quite easy but he, he has been a standout in recent weeks Celtic fans going along today won't be disappointed that he's out today but they'll certainly hope he's there next week I'm not suggesting he's due his bus pass anytime soon but Moy is the oldest member of the squad <laughs> And uh, it might just be, as Mark said, the precaution, just let him have a day off. O'Reilly did score his first goal of the season when he came on uh, against St Mirren last Saturday and looked the part again, having previously looked a little bit jaded. Uh, So, you know, Ange Postacoglu, as they always say, sees them in training every day. He knows who to go with and who to leave out. A big test for Aberdeen and Barry Robson as well because if you go back to, was it the last time Celtic and Aberdeen played each other in December, that seemed to be the beginning of the end really for Jim Goodwin. Yes, there was bigger results that went against them but they played against Celtic at Pataudry. They set up really defensive. They lost a goal in the 87th minute and the Aberdeen supporters were not happy about the way 
that yeah. you know Aberdeen set up against Celtic. A lot of the fans had a lot to say about Jim Goodwin and, yeah. and how they set up in that game, and he never really recovered from it. Yes, this is a different game; it's away from home, but it's a big test for Barry Robson. It certainly is, um, and so soon in his managerial career, going to Celtic Park against this post the Coggle side that just sweep everybody away so it'll be interesting to see how he sets up uh, I know Gab said that it was I would like a 3-5-2 formation so again that's a wee bit different but that day up at Petaudry Jim Goodwin had a game plan he was six minutes away from getting a point and how quickly football changes with that little bit of quality that then started the ball rolling and what ultimately led to his, his sacking so Different game, different circumstances at Celtic Park, but Ange Postacogo will treat it the same. You Barry won't Robson, treat it any different. Barry Robson is doing a, an audition today. He's auditioning for the job of Aberdeen manager. Uh, when Celtic played at Petaudry, Aberdeen were anti football. Today, they'll need to be pro entertainment because Barry Robson has people to impress. And uh, I think that's the kind of football you see from Aberdeen today. He'll take his cue from the 60,000 crowd, from the atmosphere that's going to be there. From the first whistle What do you make of the way Aberdeen are handling Their managerial situation at the moment Because Dave Cormack has said That Barry Robson is likely to be in charge Until at least the end of February Different teams handle it in different ways Motherwell have already held Their interviews, they did Mm. that on Friday It's likely you'd think that By Monday we'll maybe know who the next Motherwell manager is going to be Whereas Aberdeen are taking a lot more time over it I, I totally understand it. Uh, I think it's right because I think Aberdeen have got the luxury. Um, they're in the position that they can take their time. Motherwell are a completely different kettle of fish. They're fighting relegation just now. They've got a terrific one midweek. But I think that Aberdeen are doing the right thing. I think they've got time to sit back, analyse, and obviously, as you touched on there, Barry Robson, caretaker manager, we see it a million times. If he had to go and pull off a result today at Celtic Park, it would jump him right into the favourite seat to take it permanently. But I think Aberdeen are doing the right thing because they have got to get their next appointment right. They've got so many things wrong at Petaudry, they have to get it right. So take your time. And from a Celtic perspective, they just need to keep winning, Mark. Simple as that. Ah, simple as that. I mean, it's in their hands. They they don't need to change the way they're playing, really. Um, anybody that comes up against them, any style, any formation that comes up against them, they seem to play the same way and always get a result. Ange Postacoglu just needs to keep those levels. And when you've got such a big squad and it's so competitive, I think it's fairly easy to keep those levels so... Yep, same again today for him How do you argue with a man who's got one defeat in 57 league games? You know, the the consistency has been off the charts with uh, Ange Postacoglu And, you know, the the introduction of O today adds another intriguing dimension to the whole thing It looks like an absolute belter of a game at Celtic Park Yeah, we are having a few technical difficulties at the Tony Macaroni Arena So we will hear from Roger Hanna when we can in fact I think we may be able to now Roger yeah Gordon welcome to the Tony Macaroni and I can oh, give Gordon, you he's head. done it already oh. how many minutes into the show and he's gone for Gordon already you know resign you know why you know why I've done that he's standing in front of me that is uh, that, that's a sort of a local bias I think he might describe it himself anyway I can tell you the headline team news Andrew from the Tony Macaroni and it is there is no Malik Tillman in the Rangers squad this afternoon the man who's been at the centre of all the news stories this week after his goal against Partick Thistle in the Cup a week ago is not involved in fact are four changes for the Rangers team that beat Partick Thistle in the Cup last week back come Connor Goldson Fashion Sakala Ryan Kent and Alfredo Morelos James Sands and Antonio Cholak go to the bench Yanis Hadji is rested on Liverpool well, I think that is the technical difficulties. We've had some difficulties so in the you... studio as well at the moment. We'll go back to Roger Hanna when we can. The difficulties in the studio is that as soon as Roger started speaking, Mark Wilson just fell off his stool, <laughs> crashing into the wall. It was none of us even concentrating on what Roger was saying there. I have taken my grandchildren to I plays that were better behaved than this. <laughs> this is this is it's like the substitute teachers in, isn't it? And it's just chaos. It's yeah. yeah it doesn't take a lot to get me injured. Trust me. So can we please fix the stools? In here? Right. Let Let's see if Roger can bring some decorum. Have we got you back, Roger? You certainly have, Andrew. I don't know how much of that you heard. Did you get the team news at all? We are having technical troubles here at Livingston. 
Yeah, we got the Rangers team, I believe. The, the headline, of course, that Malik Tillman is not in the squad whatsoever. Yeah, well, I can give you a Livingston team. A couple of changes David Martindale was made after that shock. Scottish Cup exit to Inverness. Carly Thistle here seven days ago. Out go Jason Holt to the bench and Bruce Anderson, of course, who was injured in the first half of that defeat. In comes Sean Kelly and Stephen Omeonga to bolster that midfield. So Livingston go with Shamal George in goal. It's a back four. Nicky Devlin. Jack Fitzwater, Io Obalai and James Penrace. Across the middle, Stephen Omeonga, Sean Kelly and Scott Pittman. And then Stephen Bradley and Stephen Kelly will flank Joel Nubley, who scored half of his four goals this season against Rangers, of course. The subs, Hamilton, Longridge, Boys, De Lucas, Montano, Holt, Shinny, Bahambala and Guthrie. We'll get through the Rangers team. Alan McGregor and goals back four. James Tavernier, Connor Goulds and Ben Davis and Borna Barisic. Then Nicholas Raskin making his league first start for Rangers to Klein Kamara. Then it's Fashion Sakala, Todd Cantwell and Ryan Kent behind Alfredo Morelos on the bench. McLaughlin, Cholak, Sands, Wright, Ruth, King, Devine, 17-year-old Zach Lovelace and 16-year-old Bailey Rice, both on the bench for an injury hit Rangers this afternoon. The ref's David Dickinson, the VAR is Andrew Dallas. I actually did this game, Andrew, for Super Scoreboard last season, and Michael Beale had just left Rangers. It was Giovanni Van Bronckhorst's first Premiership match as manager. The likes of Calvin Bassey, Joe Aribo, Nathan Patterson, and Jermaine Defoe all on the side. So that just shows you the sort of changes that have been since that game last season. They have been back once to West Lothian since then. Scott Arnfield and James Tavernier are scoring a quick fire double after Nubilee's early open on that first day of the league season. That will be remembered as John Suter's only appearance, if you remember, in the Rangers jersey. Nubilee, as I say, has scored so far in both games against Rangers this season in the league, but Livy still ruling from that cup exit seven days ago. It was a real setback for the team, fourth in the Premiership, to lose to a mid-ranking championship team in Inverness. Rangers, they arrive in far better form They've won 12 out of 13 under Michael Beale since his return to the club. The manager's so happy, he didn't even name-check Dale Wilson and Keevans when he was talking about punditry comedy acts through the week. Well, the only comedy in this studio was Mark Wilson falling off his stool a few moments ago. But when you look at that Rangers team, Michael Beale has talked about the injuries they've got. That is really highlighted by... The bench, Roger said it, 16-year-old Bailey Rice, 17-year-old Zach Lovelace. Mm. Guys that haven't really been about the Rangers squad a it's, lot and, and they're on the bench for this game. It's highly ironic. At the end of a week in which Michael Beale has spoken about having too many players and, and he'll need to get rid of players in this, the, the close season, now he finds himself with not enough players to have what you would know as a, a recognisable bench. However, I go back to the point, the 11 who start are better than the 11 they face. And that's why Rangers are favourites. No Malik Tillman in the Rangers squad, an interesting one, Mark? Yeah, as um, again, could be a number of reasons. Could be carrying a slight knock, could be for other reasons that maybe one eye in next week because he's certainly the man in form for Rangers. But when you look at that midfield, I think what well, Rangers fans going along will be excited to see Cantwell and Raskin again, who showed up pretty well last week. But even though Rangers are an injury hit, you still look at the bench and who they could turn to if things aren't going right. They've obviously got Cholak, right, Roof is back in there and young King, King as well. So plenty of strength. Should get the job done. I know it's a hard place to go, but Rangers always seem to find a way there. People always sort of wheel out that cliche of it being a, a hard place to go and it is a lot of the time, but Rangers do have a very good record there of late, Gordon. Uh, yeah, I think if you're Rangers and Celtic, it's only hard if you don't get in with the right approach. You know it's going to be difficult. You know Livingston going to get at you. They know how to play the pitch. They train on it every single day. Um, but you can't make that as an excuse. I, I agree with Mark and, and Hugh. You look at that Rangers team, it's full of talent. Midley Park have got some terrific players. Morelos up front, they'll be hoping he gets amongst the goals. So... I think that if Rangers go about their business the right way today, they'll get three points. Three wins in the last three minutes. You can't do better than that. Well, two big games there at Celtic Park in the Tony Macaroni Arena, but that's not even half the story in the top flight because there are another three big matches. St Mirren against Ross County, Dundee United against St Johnson and Hibs against Kilmarnock. We'll get the build-up from... And now a word from our podcast sponsor, Lookers Motor Group. They've got Jaguar, Land Rover and Volvo showrooms across Glasgow and the West, so you can find the new or used approved car that's right for you. The Land Rover showrooms can be found in Motherwell, Darnley and the north of Glasgow with their Jaguar and Volvo showroom found in Hillington. And right now at lookers.co.uk, you can browse and shop 24-7, value your part exchange, order and take delivery from the comfort of your own home. 
Every approved used Jaguar, Land Rover or Volvo Comes with a minimum of 12 months warranty Roadside assistance, MOT test warranty An independent mileage and service history check Software updates and lots more Check out lookers.co.uk To get your new or used approved Land Rover, Jaguar or Volvo today Now back to the podcast I'm a British gas money saving engineer Helping protect homes and wallets Home care covers your heating, plumbing, electrics and drains But most of all, it helps protect you from surprise repair bills The last thing anyone needs right now So if anything goes wrong, we'll be around to put it right And if you buy British Gas Home Care now You get your first three months half price Fish, bosh, less dosh Search British Gas Boiler Cover Offer ends 20th of February Excludes Home Care Basic Features vary across products Geographical restrictions and terms apply I started to lose hope of ever finding the one, but then I saw them online. We met in person and they looked exactly like their photo. As soon as they touched my face, I knew we were made for each other and I just couldn't believe attractive, well-put-together glasses were available elsewhere. Don't fancy the frames at your opticians? Specsavers is available. Bring in your prescription and get two for one from £69 with single vision lenses to the same prescription. Ask in store for details. What's games next? Action as it happens. And your reaction from five on the open line. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Hugh Keevans here with me, Andrew McLean, on today's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. We've had all the build-up from Celtic Park and the Tony Macaroni Arena ahead of Celtic against Aberdeen and Livingston against Rangers. There has been a big goal down south as well in injury time between Arsenal and Aston Villa. A big one in the title race as well. Arsenal have come from behind. Now 3-2 up an own goal from Emmy Martin. Martinez as well it came off the bar hit him on the shoulder and went in so that is a, a big goal with Man City chasing them down Scotland women's national team also in action today in the Pinatar Cup they are nil nil around 20 minutes in against the Philippines in that game we'll keep you up to date there but there is also three other big premiership matches to go around let's go to Easter Road Fraser Wisher is there for Hibs against Kilmarnock I am Andrew and looking forward to it today in the Capital City and Hibs of course last Saturday had a free day, didn't have a game because they were knocked out of the Scottish Cup by heart so they've had a couple of weeks to train, get some players fit and just enjoy the victory last time out in Paisley, it was an excellent performance by them and despite some of the negative headlines has been around the club this season, I win today could see them in fourth place if Livy don't win their game against Rangers and they're actually Hibs in with a good shout of European football next season in fact since the defeat to Hearts at New Year, they're unbeaten in the league in five games. Three wins, two draws, 13 goals. They must be confident of continuing that run today. And it's really been helped by the form of Eli Yuan beginning to slowly show more consistent form. He's scoring his last three games. Really important for Hibs at that time is Kevin Nisbet, who misses out today. Again, has hardly played a part in those three games. One, he was just after his transfer. He got injured in the second and then missed the game in Paisley the other week. And so Kelly will have to be careful of Yuan, but they must come with a wee bit of confidence after an excellent cup victory at Tannadice last week and a draw to Nevis Cali. This, of course, the quarterfinals gives them the chance of a second cup semi-final this year, but it's the league games now that must take priority. And for Derek McInnes, he must find a way of improving their away league form. He needs to sort it very quickly. 13 away games this season, no wins and only two two draws and if they're going to stay up they must start taking more points on the road they just can't rely on their whole form I'm sure Derek would happily accept a point today and they'll have to find a way of scoring I think because Hibs usually score a goal or two here but Kelly have only scored five away goals in those 13 games and of course Dodge can't play against his parent club Sean Lafferty left the club in January Young in this camera is injured so a lot will be expected of Kyle Vassell up front and he to, to plays today as the lone striker for the teams for Hibernian they go 4-2-3-1 formation but Stevenson is on the bench and Newell McCurdy miss out from the last time and in come three players Chris Cadden Ewan Henderson and Marianne Cabraja so they go with David Marshall in goals Conrad Egan Riley Will Fish Paul Hanlon and Marianne Cabraja at the back Two in midfield, James Jago and Ewan Henderson with Chris Cadden. Josh Campbell signed a new contract this week and Aidan McGeady in behind Ellie Yuhan. On the bench for Hibs, Murray Johnson, Lewis Miller, Kel McGuinness, Jake Doyle-Hayes, Jaya Tavares, Matthew Hopp, Lewis Stevenson, Oscar McIntyre and Josh O'Connor. For Kelly, just the one change, Dodge, as I mentioned earlier, can't play against his parent club. So in comes Jordan Jones. Slight change to, to a 4-2-3-1 for Derek McInnes. Sam Walker in goals. Lewis Mayo, Joe Wright, Chris Stokes and Luke Chambers at the back. Two midfield, Brad Lyons and Blair Alston with Dan Armstrong, Rory McKenzie and Jordan Jones behind the lone striker, Kyle Vassell. On the bench for Kelly, Zach Hemming, Alan Power, Ash Taylor, Liam Polworth, Fraser Murray, Scott Robinson, Kerr McEnroy, Ryan Alibosi and Bobby Wales. The 
today, Easter Road, is John Beaton and the VAR referee is Stephen Kirkland. Yeah, Hibs have sort of perceived to be having not a great season. It didn't start out that well, Hugh, but you look at it, they're unbeaten in their last five league games. Yes, in the middle of that, they had a big cup defeat to Hearts, but quietly going about their business and to the point where they're only one point behind Livingston, European football is now a real realistic aspiration for them. I thought there was a time when uh, Lee Johnson was in danger of losing his job. Uh, I thought that the the club would be in the position of having lost Jack Ross and uh, Sean Maloney in quick succession, faced with a third big decision. But credit to him, he has stuck to his task. And the man under pressure is Derek McInnes because a sequence of results today could put Kelly bottom of the table. So it's a big afternoon for Derek and the players who simply don't score enough goals. But for Lee Johnson, someone who is a great gift to our profession, Andrew, because as you know, he never stops talking. And sometimes you think he's all talk and no action. But fair play to the man, he's hung in and other rewards could be on their way. Yeah, Hibs will feel confident today going into this one that they can make it six unbeaten, that they can potentially put pressure on Livingston above them. Livingston obviously a a tough game today at home to Rangers. They do have a game in hand on Hibs, but if Hibs can can win today, potentially leapfrog Livingston, get them into fourth, it would be a big day for them. Yeah, and then I'm pretty sure Lee Johnson would be looking up ahead of him in Hearts. You know, that cuts the points difference with Hearts to five points. And look, three or four weeks ago, could you have even envisaged that with the problems that was facing Lee Johnson when he had back-to-back defeats against his great rivals and it looked like it was only going to end one way but that game against Aberdeen a real turning point one manager lost his job the other has kicked on and he'll be looking upwards now so yeah, it's been a big couple of weeks for Hibs but look, let's be honest they should be there yeah, Hibs co- should be there in the table it, the, all this you know the last couple of years where it's been a shambles sack manager after manager and being in the bottom half of the table, they should be third or fourth in the league. And you look at Kilmarnock's away record, the worst in the league mm. by an absolute mile. They've lost thir- uh, 11 of their 13 games. They've only drawn the other two. So they've got two points from 13 games. They really need to start picking up points away from home because you're not going to stay up if your record's like that, are you? Not just away from home. I think they've got to start picking up points uh, full stop. Andrew, they've got a couple of... Real important games coming up. Now, yeah, I think Hibs will get into this game firm favourites because they're on their own, they're at home. But this is a winnable game for Kamarnock, there's no doubt about that. And then I think their next home game would be Motherwell, which would be an absolute cracker to go and win for both sides. Uh, obviously, two of them down there fighting for survival. And then I think they play Rangers. So they've got a lot of big games coming up. Um, I said at the beginning of the season, I thought it was going to be a long, hard struggle for Kamarnock. And so far, it's proven right. Well, let's hear from both managers, starting with Lee Johnson. It's the sole focus, isn't it? To make sure that we we give ourselves a shot of European football. And, like that. and that is that is a a real... It's not a stretch goal, because it should be... Uh, sort of standard if you like for a club like us that is how we're going to build that consistency of decision making based on knowing the financial parameters that you can work with and obviously giving our supporters what they want which is uh, real genuine competitive football like outside of the competitive national league that's here already As I say we've had some tight games on the road this season in isolation when you look at certain games we've been unlucky and, and close to getting positive results but there's been too many um, this season when we, ha- we haven't been that so last Saturday it was uh, a strong performance in terms of that side of it didn't give up, give up too many opportunities to the opposition and I think when you go in as a away team getting that first goal as we did last week you know it, it, it can bring that pressure onto the home side that we've not been able to do often enough this season Well that's Hibs against Kilmarnock a big game down at the bottom at Tanadice Dundee United against St Johnson Dave Galloway's there Yeah we're hoping for a big crowd here today Andrew as Dundee United celebrate 40 years since they became Scottish champions admission prices have been cut some of the 1983 team will take to the pitch before kick-off and there will be a singing section in the shed end of the stadium today of course the irony is that the current terror side sits bottom of the league after picking up only one point from five games. St Johnston's results, mind you, haven't been good either, but they'll come here back by a substantial away support as they try and capitalise on a run of pre-split games that don't involve any matches against the old firm. 
both sides have made a few changes for United. Firstly, in come Jume, Behic, McGrath and Fotheringham out go McMahon, Niskanen, uh, Middleton and Kudjo. So it's Birigiti in goals. A back three for United today of Smith, Mulgrew and Aina. A midfield four, McGrath, Levitt, Jume and Behic with Fotheringham, Fotheringham and Sibbald behind, behind uh, Fletcher up top the subs for United Newman McMahon Graham Niskanen Anaku Freeman Kujo uh, Thompson and McLeod four changes also for St Johnston it's uh, Gordon Montgomery Halberg and Clark in for Constantine Gallagher uh, Carey and McLennan it looks like probably a 4-2-3-1 for them Matthews in goals across the back uh, Brown Mitchell Gordon and Montgomery McPherson and Phillips the sitting midfielders with uh, further forward Wright Halberg and Clark May leading the line as per usual the subs for the Saints Sinclair, Gallagher, Wotherspoon Rudden, Bear, uh, Crawford Kerry, McLennan and Murphy referee is Kevin Clancy and on VAR is David Monroe well, Hugh, Dave was telling us there it's the, the 40th anniversary. All the yep. you know the, the favourites from that team are, are there from the title winning side of 1983. And the, what players they were. I mean, uh, Paul Hegarty. I met Paul recently in Glasgow at an Andrea Bocelli concert, would you put it? Hmm. Uh, Davy Neri. The Dazzler will remember Davy Neri, a uh, Wraith Rover stalwart after he had won a title with Dundee United. Um, Malpass. Paul, Paul Sturrock. Fantastic players. I remember the day very well. How do you like it if you're a Dundee United fan to win the title by beating Dundee on the final day of the season? And it was just a sensational season. Jim McLean, now sadly no longer with us, was the the creator of the modern day Dundee United, a man who took them to European finals, European semi finals, won the title and was just a terrific character within Scottish football a genius to have done all that for Dundee United and uh, I wish them all well it's sad to see the club in the state it's in right now there's uh, unrest among the fans there's concern about the financial position of the club there's obviously concern about the league position of the club the rock bottom but I hope that Paul Hegarty enjoys his day because he deserves it and all the other players of that era Thoroughly deserve it too. I must, I must admit, just quickly, um, the '83 side. I ran them ragged many a time. Uh, a lot of them will have sore legs going out there. How come they won the title then? Yeah, yeah. where did, where, where did so, your team finish that season? Uh, sorry, '82 then. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I played with a few of them. Terrific players, as, as Hugh quite rightly says, and uh, you know they'll have a wonderful day. But the most important thing that the ex-players will be along there hoping for is a Dundee United three points. Yeah, Dundee United have lost each of their last three league games. The last time they lost four in a row was Jack Ross's last four league games in charge. Yes, there was the the 7 0 against Alkmaar in the middle of that. There was also a 9 0 defeat to Celtic in there. Mm. But, you know, pressure may start to build on Liam Fox if Dundee United can't get themselves off the bottom of the table sometime yeah, soon. I think it's already there. I think it's already building. Hugh's right. There is concern about many things at the club, but you have to look at the immediate future of the club and that's staying in this Premiership. And Liam Fox needs wins. I, you know what? I do fancy them today. When you look at that squad, that Dundee United squad, even when you look at how they played at Tynecastle, you know, I know they get beat down to 10 men, but they played well. They've got good players. They just need to piece it all together, they, but I fancy them today. Could the ultimate irony be on where well, Dundee United face Dundee 40 years after that league mm. title win in the playoff that decides whether Dundee come up or Dundee United go down? That would be the ultimate irony. Do you know the, the, the thing I, I, I'm listening to Mark there, and I've been guilty of as well? We keep saying this Dundee United will get good players. Now, we know they're good, good players. But we're now into February and they're sitting bottom of the league. How long are Dundee United fans going to go along there and say, we'll get good players but lose game after game after game and all of a sudden get relegated? So as much as they have got good players, they've got to get a good team to start winning and getting three points. Well, their American owner is over for this one, so he'll be keeping a keen eye on what's happening on the pitch. That's Dundee United against St Johnston, the final Premiership game, St Mirren against Ross County. David Freel. Yeah, Andrew, and there's good news and bad news for St Myrna ahead of this one. I'll start with the bad news, get that out of the way first. Alec Gogic, Keanu Bakis, Scott Tanzer, they've all joined 
the growing injury list and haven't made the St Mirren squad. It was already stretched to the max and they are all out today. But there is good news. Curtis Main, he was a major injury doubt, but he has declared himself fit. He starts up front and Charles Dunn, such a big player at the back, has also returned from injury. So I think Stephen Robinson, it's fair to say, will be boosted by those two being available and they're actually trying to avoid a fourth defeat in 10 days. St Mirren have been a, a real success story this season, but they've had a bit of tough time. Obviously, as I said, a lot of injuries to handle just now and obviously losing players as well. They start the day in six or a point ahead of Aberdeen. I suppose if Celtic do the business for them across the, the city, then they could even extend that gap today. Stephen Romsey has made four changes. As I said, out go Gogic, Bacchus, Tanza and Richard Taylor. In come Charles Dunn, Greg Kilty, Terry Small and Ryan Flynn. So some will be the usual 3-5-2 formation. Trevor Carson in goals, Marcus Fraser, Declan Gallagher and Charles Dunn at the back. Ryan Strain, Greg Kilty, Ryan Flynn, Mark O'Hara and Terry Small across the midfield with Tony Watt and Curtis Main up front. Subs for St Mirren is Urminski, Shaughnessy, Richard Taylor, Fraser Taylor, Offord, Kenny, Campbell, Gil Martin and Jameson. As for Ross County, Malcolm Mackay's team struggling at the bottom. They lost 1-0 here at the start of the season. They then beat St Mirren 3-2 in Dingwall in November. There isn't usually much between the teams. I was looking back. It was a narrow one apiece and a draw last season. Over the years, it tends to be quite tight affairs. Probably similar today. County are second bottom right now. They're badly in need of points. Malcolm Mackay was a busy man in, Jan- in January, but one of his signings, St Mirren's Eamon Brophy, isn't clearly available to play today. County haven't actually played since losing 2-1 to Rangers. A fortnight ago, they missed out in the Scottish Cup weekend. And Malcolm makes one change. Simon Murray is in for Eamon Brophy. So it's it's a 3 4 1 2 formation. Ross Laidlaw in goals. Back three of Keith Watson, Jack Baldwin, and Alec Yakaviti. Midfield four of Connor Randall, Noan Kenny, Victor Latoury, and George Harmon with Jan Danda in behind Simon Murray and Jordan White. It's also County are Monroe, Sims, Stones, Kankola, Samuel, Calica, and Smith, Aurora Edwards, and Guion Edwards. The referee is Graham Granger, and the VAR is Gavin Duncan. Yeah, well, Stephen Robinson is very happy with how St Mirren are going this season, Hugh, but they won't want to make it four defeats no. in a row. You start creeping into territory there where, you know, morale and, and things like that start to shift. And David is telling us about the injury worries that he has for today, so it's a diminished St Mirren. The only thing you can say, though, is that they're playing a team who have scored 20 goals in the league all season. Kyogo at Celtic has scored 19 He's only one goal short of the entire goals for for Ross County this season. So that clearly is Malcolm Mackay's big problem. But the way that things are going for St Mirren right now, luck appears to be leaving them behind for the moment. It will return one day. But as Mark and Gordon know, sometimes you're in that rut uh, and they may struggle today. I yeah. think I think that's all right. I think that'll be a good game, Hugh. I don't think it'll be a scrappy game, uh, as we normally hear from uh, Paisley after four or five minutes. Um, I think that you're right. You highlighted there, Hugh, about Ross County not scoring enough goals. They've added firepower. I think Malky Mackay's got a little bit of a, a knack of the January window, uh, strengthening his side, making them better. Go- I fancy Ross County this afternoon to do something. Oh. Here's the thing with Malky Mackay, is he even going to be there to see it this season? At Ross County is you know, second favourite for the Aberdeen job at the minute. I wonder if they're looking at him. I, I think was, was Gordon Strachan the favourite last I saw according well, to the, the bookies odds, which you just wonder not if so he gets accurate. a shout. If, if Harry Redknapp gets a Leeds United job, I am applying <laughs> for the Aberdeen job. Hey, Neil Warnock's back, isn't he, at whatever age he oh. is now? Yeah. 70, 74. 74. Still life left in you yet, does? Oh, <laughs> plenty of life I left. I found in someone me. older than me. <laughs> well, and that, his name's Neil Warnock. Well, that is the build up from the five Premiership games. We'll go back around the grounds next. The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Hugh Keevans here with me, Andrew McLean, on today's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Around 15 minutes to go until the big kickoffs around the Scottish Premiership. And I tell you what, I hope they've got as much action as that Aston Villa-Arsenal game oh. had because it went 1-0 Aston Villa, Arsenal equalised, 2-1 Aston Villa, Arsenal equalised and then a goal in, was it the 94th minute? And It was an own goal from Emi Martinez. Jorginho hit the bar, came off Martinez's shoulder, went in for 3-2 and they had enough time to go up and get a fourth as well because Martinez had gone up for the resulting corner and a breakaway. So Arsenal score to make it 4-2. Some game, let's hope for best, more of the same up here. Best English Premier League game I have seen this season and I include Brighton toying with Liverpool uh, among that list. Uh, so... Great entertainment, 
we will get the same today. I am really intrigued by O making his Celtic debut in front of 60,000 people. Well, not his Celtic debut. His first start for Celtic in front of 60,000 people. Livy, hmm. the drama that's going on uh, at other places like Dundee United. Uh, Kilmarnock, as I say, are the wrong sequence of results and Kelly go bottom of the table today. So... Great game prospect. Well, let's go back to the Tony Macaroni Arena with Roger Hanna because Rangers obviously have a really good record under Michael Beale. They have a really good record at the Tony Macaroni Arena of late as well, Roger. But Livingston will be encouraged by their performances against Rangers so far this season. Andrew, without doubt, there is a few injury setbacks today, though you'll notice in that midfield, no John Lundstrom, no Ryan Jack, and of course no Malik Tillman, we're told it's a minor calf issue, Rangers didn't want to take any risks with the via sport, via play, cup final only eight days away against Celtic at Hamden, so he's not there, it's a very young, youthful Rangers bench this afternoon, including 16-year-old Bailey Rice back from captaining the Scotland under-17 side to a 7-0 win against Switzerland in midweek. He's on the bench, as is 17-year-old Zach Lovelace, and the likes of Adam Devine and Leon King as well. So Rangers, they'll just want to get this out of the way. They'll want to make it 13 wins from 14 under Michael Beale, and then they can switch their focus to Hamden a week tomorrow. I think someone that could be looking forward to this game as well, Roger, is Joel Nubley, scored in both games against Rangers this season. Yeah, and he's a terrific player. I spoke to him here a couple of weeks ago. He came back, made his first start in three months in the 3-1 win against Kilmarnock here a fortnight ago. Um, he is crucial to everything David Martindale does here. Um, and especially today when there's no Bruce Anderson. Bruce Anderson off injured in the first half in a cup defeat to Cali Thistle last Saturday. Nubley will be an old-fashioned centre-forward this afternoon. He played sort of slightly off to the left in that game against Kelly a couple of weeks ago. Oh, and we've lost them. There we go. The technical difficulties are back. But we got most of that from Roger Hanna there. The one piece of injury news that he did deliver to us is that Malik Tillman has was a minor problem with his calf, yeah. I think Michael Beale has said beforehand. I think some Rangers fans will be concerned with that big game next Sunday. Malik Tillman's been so key for Rangers over the last few weeks as well. All you can do is take the manager at his word. And if he says it's minor, then who are we to say it's major? Um, I think perhaps best for Tillman not to be involved after the weekend of controversy and the week of further controversy that followed the, his involvement in the game against Partick Thistle in the Scottish Cup. So um, Rangers still have a strong enough 11. He's a terrific player. He would be a miss if he weren't ready for the cup final, but uh, they've got a strong enough 11 to win the game today. And no real surprise that despite the fact he did media this week, Yanis Hadji is not on the squad when you've been out for a year. I think he's maybe only played an hour of football across two appearances. Livingston away, maybe not the, the best no, opportunity for no, him to come in, is it? number of reasons. The, the nature of the game, what they're facing, and the pitch, obviously. When you've been out for such a long period of time, this, this is another thing with these pitches that it does affect people with long-term injuries, people with existing injuries how many times have we seen players just left out when they're, they're playing these artificial surfaces so correct decision from Beal Hadji will have his time I wonder if it'll be next week he'll be involved in the big stage it would be a big one to throw him in but everything that happens this weekend will be viewed through the lens of next weekend won't it that's just what happens in this city Gordon yeah you can't really plan because you don't know what's going to happen this weekend with the games you don't know about injuries or whatever it may be um, but I think that you know, looking at Hadji, for instance, yeah, of course, one eye next week because of the the, 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 the pitch situation. Uh, Kyogo, obviously, will start in the cup final. Of that, there's no doubt. Um, I just think we're in for a terrific afternoon of football, uh, Andrew. I think we'll get excitement around the grounds. I think we'll get plenty of goals, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, let's hear from Michael Beale ahead of this one. Extremely difficult one. Obviously, they know the surface and the pitch. I like going there because we take a great number of fans there and the, their fans are close to the pitch and I think they have an impact on the game. We know that Davey have his team fired up. It's a, it's a squad, funny enough, just in the, in the leaving of Scotland and coming back, the backbone of this team, the goalkeeper I worked with a lot at Liverpool, Shamal George. Morgan Boys was a young player that plays at centre-half coming through the academy. Stevie Kelly was a boy that... I had a, a lot of affection and a lot of thoughts towards his future when he was here and I think he's been a good player for Livingston this year. And Joel Noble was my striker at Chelsea many, many years ago under 9s, 10s, 12s and 13s. So I know Joel and his family 
very well. So there's some familiar faces there. It's important that we go there and put on a really, really strong away performance. Our last away performance in the league was away to Hearts and it was our best performance to date. So I'm looking for somewhere around that, certainly out of possession. Well, that's all the build-up from the Tony Macaroni Arena. We'll go back to Celtic Park next. The winning team all season long. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Well, five minutes until kick-off in today's big matches. We'll go back to Celtic Park in a second. Just touching on those Rangers injuries that we mentioned before the break. Just seen the full quotes from Michael Beale there. He's talking about Malik Tillman, John Lundstrom and Ryan Jack. He says, hopefully the weekend off helps them be available for next week, but that's by no means certain at this moment in time. Can only take the man at his word. Uh, so clearly there is some dubiety over all three with regard to the cup final a week tomorrow not good for Rangers fans to hear yeah they'll be hoping they don't pick up any extra injuries today especially when you look mm. at that bench yeah yeah but I've got a sneaky feeling all of them will be fit have a rest week this week and before you know it they'll be back in so training. young so cynical you yeah. see, this ah, is what how many times have we heard that before the big are you saying so... the man doesn't tell the truth no I, I think he knows he's got enough in his squad to, to get he, through today he's maybe exaggerated the truth a little bit I, I'm with Mark I, out of three I think you're guaranteed two anyway. You might have one that's a real doubt, but you're right. Uh, the, 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 the fact of a cup final at Hamden against Celtic, the recovery goes very quickly. Did you mislead the press when you were the Air United manager? Did I miss what? Mislead the press. Misled yes. the team. Oh, sorry. I misled everyone. I still do to this <laughs> yes, day. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. it's yeah. fabricating there's, the truth of something no, that you've been quite a, good at over the years, Gordon, I think. There's not a true word comes out of my mouth, <laughs> let me tell you, and I'm very proud to say that. Right, on that note, let's go back to Celtic Park for a recap of the teams and the build-up with Gabriel. Thanks, Andrew. Yes, Celtic aiming to make it nine wins in a row and maintain that nine-point gap over Rangers at the top of the league. Now, the big team news here is that Kyogo Furuhashi is fit to be in the squad but not fit enough to start. He is on the bench in one of three changes to the team. O leads the line. His first start for the Hoops. A big opportunity for the Korean forward today. A recap of the Celtic team then. Joe Hart in goal. A back four of Alice Johnson, Cameron Carter against Carl Stahlfeld and Greg Taylor. Captain Callum McGregor in midfield with Rayo Hatate and Matt O'Reilly. Jota will be on the right wing. Dazen Maida on the left and O leads the line. Bain, Hax, Ibanovic, Abada, Kobayashi, Kyogo, Iwata, Bernabe, Rousen and Forrest are the substitutes. What about the visitors? They only make one uh, one change from the Aberdeen team that beat Motherwell last time out. Of course, it is former self, Barry Robson, who's an interim charge of them. Liam Scales cannot play against his parent clubs. Jack McKenzie comes in to the left-hand side of the fence. They play a 3-5-2 formation. It's Shea Gorta in goal. Matthew Pollock, Angus McDonald and Jack McKenzie are the back three. Matty Kennedy is the right wing back with Johnny Hayes left wing back. The midfield three are Ilva Ramadani, Graham Shinney and Leighton Clarkson. Boyamiovsky and Duke lead the line. Substitutes to the Dons. Lewis, Markandi, Mislovich, Watkins, Palvara, Coulson, Duncan, Richardson and Roberts. The referee here is Willie Collum. And the VAR is Alan Newlands. Willie Collum just leading the two teams out onto the pitch right now. Uh, Callum McGregor on the left-hand side. Graham Shinney captaining the Dons and visiting, uh, clapping the visiting fans. It's a really big game here today, Andrew. Even though the fact Celtic have won the last five meetings between the two sides, it looks like it might be uh, an easy fixture for them. But four of those have only been by a one-goal margin. The latest of them... Of course, that first game after the Cartel World Cup just before Christmas last year at Pitodri. And it was the start of a shocking run for Jim Goodwin's men. It eventually cost him his job. The Dons were resolute that day. It took a stunning strike from Captain Callum McGregor at the death. And you've got to expect the Dons to be just as tough today. They'll look to stifle the hooks and hit them on the counter with Miofsky and Duke up top. But we know the attacking talent this Celtic team has and the fact that they will not stop until the final whistle blows. The team's just getting in position now. A big game for O, who makes his first Celtic start. A big game here at Celtic Park and kickoff is up next. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Available now. Call them today. Right then, time for your terrible predictions. Yes. Five games in the Premiership. Let's hear them. Celtic to beat Aberdeen. Rangers to beat Livy. Hibs to beat Kilmarnock. St Mirren and Ross County a draw. And sorry, sorry, producer Callum. St Johnston to win at Tannadice. Mm. 
The top two will win Celtic beating Aberdeen Rangers will get a victory at Levy And then I'm going for home wins for the rest Hibs beating Kilmarnock St Mirren beating Ross County And Dundee United on the 40th anniversary of their League One Will beat St Johnson Well you're talking about a man that's uh, bang on form with his predictions So I'm going top two The same as the boys Celtic Rangers I'm going for Hibs and Kilmarnock A draw I'm going for Ross County at Paisley An exciting game and I'm going for Dundee United and St Johnston a draw. Well, there is going to be a minute's silence at St Mirren against Ross County for Billy Thompson. Yeah, well, rightly so. Uh, and uh, you know, you, you can never get enough people to say how decent a man was. And Billy Thompson was a thoroughly decent individual, a very good goalkeeper, had a, a long and distinguished career, but essentially. A very good man. Yeah, well said. I, I didn't know the man personally, but I go with social media and a lot of the players that I played with who had came across him on uh, numerous coaching staffs all said the same thing as Hugh. They couldn't have met a nicer guy, so fitting tribute for him today. Yeah, kickoffs all around the country. Looking forward to not just the games in the Premiership, lots of good games down the divisions as well. Two big games in the Championship last night as well. It's a oh. really exciting league. But you've got to say it probably benefited Air United out of anyone. They weren't even playing last night, but yeah. results went their way. And they've got games in hand, Andrew. So they could uh, come with a late finish there in that uh, title race. It's very exciting. Um, but I think it's the concern of... Queen's Park, Dundee and Ayr and I don't think anybody else gets a look in An early chance for Dundee United Behic, his shot saved by the legs of Remy Matthews so they're looking to start quick I've just seen a picture as well of a huge Legends banner obviously marking that league title win 1983, 40 years ago taking up a lot of the stand at Dundee United It's something that will obviously stick with the club forever I mean me growing up there um, as a young player 16 year old Paul Sturrock signed me on the coaching staff at that time was Morris Malpass Paul Hegarty John Holt mm. and surrounding the walls of Tanadice everywhere you walked was pictures of that occasion so you could never escape it but I mean for me as a young player growing up having those guys run about and you know holding legendary status at the club kind of shaped my career in terms of how they got over the line in that occasion you know, much of the morals they had in their team and, and what they brought to, to Scottish football. Uh, it was fantastic. If ever you what wanted you role, if ever you wanted role <laughs> models. Don't believe that for a minute. No. Oh, I mean, that's, that's 16, Dundee United. That's all post. honesty. Well, I'll tell you honesty. what, I was about to do the teaser, but. Oh, we've got one. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Celtic 1, Aberdeen 0, Callum McGregor. He scored very very late on at Pataudry in the last meeting between the two sides he scored very very early at Celtic Park it's a goal for the Celtic captain he volleys in and what's that around three minutes on the oh. clock Celtic oh. already have the advantage worst possible start for yeah. Barry Robson uh, you can imagine that the atmosphere at kickoff time was terrific it's now been cranked up a notch uh, and so I think Ange Postacoglu will be going for the jugular here uh, trying to get it all over by half time and, uh, and perhaps several changes second half but that's the theory the reality is we've got 87 minutes left yeah hitting out with the cliches early here but Aberdeen yeah. will need to be careful oh I mean I've been there before I've been at Celtic Park and Ibrox and places where you think we'll keep this tight and within a couple of minutes you mm. lose a goal the feeling inside you're going oh here we go against a Celtic side yeah the game can quickly get away from now, you now to talk so. about simultaneous Saturday all around the Tony Macaroni now one Rangers fan is turning to another fan and saying they've scored and we all know what they mean if they, if they can get a signal on their phone we heard what it was like when we were trying to speak to Roger Hanna there wasn't quite good so they might not know what's happening at Celtic Park do people not take transistor radios to the game now <laughs> they're, 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 I'm not even sure you could buy one of them anymore I've got one Anyway, before there are any more early goals, let's do this. The first half teaser. With the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football. For the best football news and opinion online. Now, here's a taxing one for you. No easy breaks here. 
Name the last five mainland, south or central American <sighs> players to score for either Celtic or Rangers in all competitions. The last five mainland, south or central American players to score for either Celtic or Rangers in all competitions. Your time starts now. Right, so that is a test of not only your football knowledge, but your geography as well. Yeah. So mainland, south and Central American countries. I don't know how, how much should I give away of what that entails. Should I maybe do that a bit later or, or right now? No, by if, the they, if they don't know that, if, yeah, if, if you people like the guy to my left doesn't yeah. know that, then I he's excluded d- from listen, the competition. I know every. I'll tell you what. If people are struggling later on, I'll, I'll give some hints. Yeah, I'll you give should some hints. get that. No geography's my. And I get that was a lot of information to take in, so you can see that at Clyde SSB, the full question will be there and I will he's north. have a look and he's see he's north of the mainland <laughs> that's <laughs> right aye, that's aye, 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 he's, he's, well, that one. he's well no, he's east he's what, southeast what is it that David Friel always says at every game yeah he's at Gordon uh, what is it again scrappy start. scrappy start David Friel says good start here free Don't flowing tiki taka passing all round <laughs> Maine has a shot blocked he's at has he left the St Mirren Ross County game and gone somewhere else <laughs> we've, we've embarrassed him into that Hugh I, I said to you earlier a goal feast today I've got a feeling in my my, my, my fingers yeah. and my toes <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness you said I, I that there know. because I, don't want to know. I could have been anywhere <laughs> also also, if you declare this early that it's going to be a, a, a goal fest or a goal, goal feast, feast a goal says. feast then I, I think that I think doesn't he's bode already. well yeah, I'll tell you know. honestly even Roger Hanna says he just thinks that's gout that you've got <laughs> <laughs> even, the, even the bald eagle at Easter Road have got a few goals let me tell you just the one goal so far in the Premiership it went to Celtic and Callum McGregor they are 1-0 up against Aberdeen so as it stands they will extend their lead against Rangers in the table but it is very very early for all that talk but that's the fun of it today because they're both playing at the same time and Mm. that's the fun of it you can do a whole day of as things stand and as I say I I don't care about technical difficulties all around the Tony Macaroni Stadium the Rangers fans know that Celtic have scored and the Celtic fans are now waiting for news of the Tony Macaroni Stadium this is old fashioned stuff I love it yeah, lots of good games at the moment. Not really heard too much from Hibs against Kilmarnock so far. Dundee United against St Johnston has been relatively quiet. There was one early chance for Aziz Behic as well in that game. Not really any goals down the divisions either so far in the opening seven or eight minutes. The reports from Celtic Park are that they are playing very well at the start of that game. Well, that's the the last thing that uh, Aberdeen want. Uh, they've been building up to this Celtic. You know, I, I thought last Saturday, Scottish Cup against St Mirren, you know, you're a goal up, you've lost Kyogo, and then you're a goal up before he's even reached the dressing room door to see how his injury is. And then you empty the subs bench in the second half and they all score. Hatati apparently had a wonderful second half, scored twice. O'Reilly got his first goal of the season and O got his first goal as a Celtic player so they're they're building momentum When you've got such a big game on the horizon next Sunday how big is a really good performance and result the weekend before? Well it certainly is but I don't think Ange Postacoglu would worry that he really wasn't going to get that Um, because where's the evidence that that may pop up I know you need to safeguard yourself from it sometimes but Anybody that he seems to put into the starting eleven just turns at the same performance level. He was right, Hatati, O'Reilly, you know, coming in and scoring magnificent goals, and then they've apparently started well today. So, for those players, it's actually putting yourself in the shot window for a starting position next week. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. St. Mirren. One, Ross County nil. Declan Gallagher with the goal. It was a header from a Ryan Strain corner. And the update that I'd had about a minute before that had said Declan Gallagher's just tried a back heel pass on the left wing. Never worked. Nearly face planted. And he's now scored. Uh, Quite the good. minute for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Declan Gallagher, uh, fourth Scottish club he's played with. Um, I, you know, decent player, international it's player. Great yeah, I'm um, giving it's you stats not, today. It's not right. It's the fifth. <laughs> it's his fourth. Fifth. Only four teams he's played for. Mm. I got it and beat the pundit on Thursday. Uh, That's the reason I, I thought know. I was getting 
four. Um, but that's a good start for St Mirren. Uh, be a good crowd there, hopefully. Uh, good game. I told you, goals will be raining in. You will have a sore finger by the end of the night. They've had a really good home record this season as well. St Mirren will be looking to continue that. Yeah, yeah. Many. It's four, 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 <laughs> four. Five goals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just getting info there oh, from. Oh, yeah, yeah. Producer Callum, yeah. Uh, well. Hey, good start. Oh, there's one of these. Oh, I told you. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Rangers. One Livingston nil or Livingston nil Rangers one I should say because it's at the Tony Mac. However, VR. Oh, I like this drone. VR review with Clyde Built Home Improvements. I'm actually not even sure it's gone to a VAR check. I think it's just been ruled out on the pitch for offside. It was Fashion Sakala touched in from an Alfredo Morelos cross. It was a late flag, so it was one of those where mm, yeah. the assistant decided to to keep it down just to see if the move had played out then the flag goes up but there's not going to be a VAR check I think it was just a, a, a genuinely late so now flag so you go to Celtic Park and one Celtic supporter is turning to the other Celtic supporter and said they thought they'd scored and then it was ruled off for offside and so they've been jumping up and down at Celtic Park this is what we want madness in two places at one time talking about offside I mean we we spent weeks on here saying that VAR the only thing it should be definite is the line's been drawn for offside and that can't be wrong and then you switch on match of the day last week yeah and see the absolute shambles what happened there VAR, um, VAR is bad for the game it should be done away with you know like it Hugh there? no no I think it's it, it's making oh, no, a no. making a mockery of football north and south of the border no it needs to get better I shouldn't be done away with because they were the done out of two points last weekend. Yeah, I, I did see that as well. A that was shocking. Goal. I mean, how but many shocks the, do you want before you amount, acknowledge it's bad for the, the game? The amount has got right though, Hugh. Yeah, that's the on thing. The, on the flip side, there are plenty of goals that have stood this season that wouldn't have if we didn't yeah. have VAR. We're going to have a cup final week tomorrow. <laughs> He's just <laughs> brushed over that. <laughs> that, is, that is, doesn't doesn't suit going, your argument. I'm going to ignore that one. We're going to have a cup final week tomorrow that's going to be decided not by Celtic or Rangers but by VAR. Anyway, just to clarify, that goal did not stand. So still nil-nil between Livingston and Rangers. Ross County have barely been out their own half against St Mirren, who have been relentless. A few early chances for Dundee United as well that got lost in all that. Arnold Doom and Dylan Levitt, a couple of those off target. They've started well in that game. There was a low, long-range drive from McPherson. Saints' first effort on goal away to Dundee United. Cammy McPherson there, but that one... Doesn't bother. Uh, getting uh, back to Andrew, what were you laughing at with the Dun- Dundee United <laughs> thing? All that nonsense. Well, that's that, true. That, that, you, I walked down the corridor at six. Inspired. I, this, I was inspired. That, that absolute nonsense. Well, what, what I mainly meant was the, the training methods that they employed to us back then must have came from their manager, Jim McLean, in terms of uh, there wasn't much football involved. Running. What a running up Camper Down Park and that kind of shaped. The attitude in my group of players. Did you have any footballing inspirations, Gordon? Was there any any one, any teams you looked up to Stanley, at all? Or was it just, just completely focusing on yourself? Andrew, I always say it was a job. It wasn't 84, okay? It was a 10 to 12. It was a good shift. Then you went home, you got up the next morning, and then you played on a Saturday, got a hat trick. Had a good Saturday, Sunday, start it all again on Monday. It's only a job. People get carried away. Oh, I looked at a People photograph. would absolutely give know. up everything to be a professional oh, footballer and, and have a waste. career in that. How look, this fell upon him, uh, of all people. I looked this, at a photograph, it inspired me to play with Dundee United, I kissed the badge. Nonsense, what are you getting at the end of the week? Did you get a bonus? Happy days, on you go. Hmm. Goal flashes. <laughs> With Clyde Built Home Improvements. Well, I think Celtic fans will be feeling a bit happier and cheerier than Gordon DL is yeah. because they've gone 2 0 up against Aberdeen, Rayo Hatati, and it has been coming. Gabriel has said that they could have been 3 or 4 0 up by now, and Rayo Hatati starts today and gets on the score sheet. Celtic 2 0 up already, and that's only 13 minutes on the clock. A man in form. Yeah. A man in form, Hatati. I said it was interesting how Aberdeen set up. Hugh then backed up by saying, well, Aberdeen were anti-football that day at Pataudry. They need to be pro-entertainment today. Oh, well, entertainment for the Celtic fans, by the sound of it. Yeah, and the curtain has come down on Aberdeen because you don't come back from 2 nothing. 15 minutes not even played at Celtic Park. Celtic rampant. 
Uh, you mentioned the point earlier on, Andrew, that there's a psychological boost to be had from the game that comes immediately before a cup final. Uh, and for Barry Robson and Aberdeen, worrying times because it looks as if it really and truly could be could, all over by half time. Could be a sore one, Hugh, because yep. um, if you look at Aberdeen, everybody's thinking this could be a difficult game for Celtic. But Barry Robson, caretaker manager, try to get yourself in the frame for the position. They've lost the most amount of goals in 47. That's now 49 g- goals in 26 games. That's incredible. Sterling Albion down to 10 men. It's a straight red card for Blair Curry for handball. So it must be a handball by the goalkeeper outside the box. You'd think that stopped a chance. Don't see that all too often, do you? No, not really. No, quite an odd one, that. So whether he's, he's possibly came rushing out and judged it wrong or blocked a yeah, shot. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I, I, I don't away. know this, but keepers away. <laughs> your favourite shout. <laughs> but quite often, down the leagues, sometimes don't put a, a sub goalie on that. the bench. I was going to say I would that. like to see if they've got a sub goalie. I don't know. There's actually a good story this weekend. I'll need to find out the exact details of it. But is it Elgin? I think have their goalkeeping coach on the bench yeah. and he's is he 52 Aye, something like that he'd, now, become that's the what oldest, he'd become the oldest SPFL player ever if he gets oh. off the bench today Rab um, Douglas not been involved on the bench yeah, in recent yeah. weeks has he for a broth how old is Rab he must be about 40 51-year-old like Stevie Dunn was on the bench in their Scottish Cup game against Ayr last weekend so <laughs> if there's an injury or a red card he could become the oldest but I mean, SPFL player ever at the age see. of 51. That's what? it. He's got kind of too many old folk about you. Go, go, goalkeepers get better wage. I, I, I remember uh, Ayr, I signed uh, Budgie Burridge. Oh. Remember, the most, he, he's played with about 500 clubs. Uh-huh. Uh, and this is true. He come up and I t- was going to put him in the hotel. And he says, no, I'll sleep in the boardroom. He's sleeping... Uh, Blanket, right, or whatever it's called. Sleeping bag. Bag, aye. <laughs> and he went. <laughs> He's right. just had a new invention there. <laughs> cozy a sleeping bag. Aye, cozy in, to, in the boardroom, this is true. And then he had a great warm up. He used to walk in his hands as a warm up. Yeah. Right? So we then. When, t- you, when you say great warm up, as in I was it looked in, A handstand what, do, and what, does it get, what does it do for I, you though? I, I don't know, you need to ask Budgie, I'm not a coaching coach, <laughs> uh, a goalkeeping a, a, a coach. Coaching coach. And then, <laughs> you can say that again. Then, then, all your players said that. The following week, I think we were playing up north, and uh, obviously at that time they were t- you roomed with somebody, it's not like the luxury now, you get your own room. And if he got up to go for a toilet, he used to give the lad what, his a, hands? A, no, no, an orange or an apple. And in the dark, he used to say, look, if I come out and I put the light out, throw it and shout, budgie keepers, and he would <laughs> dive. <laughs> That's the true story I've ever heard in my life. And the lad got up the next morning and says, I'm never rooming with budgie again. Oh, what a character he I was. I could just imagine that being like a third choice goalkeeper would have been your dream as a footballer. I particularly didn't take anything much to do with goalkeepers. I didn't particularly like them. Oh, but I, th- I get what you're meaning, yeah, Andrew. Just not just, just trick train during the week and then not even having to be on the bench. Just sit in the stand, watch the game. And just get paid for it. Yeah, uh-huh. that'd yeah, be your yeah, ideal. I, th- I thought football just get in the way on a Saturday. Goal flashes with Clyde Bills Home Improvements. Hibs one, Kilmarnock nil, and it's Will Fish with the goal a header at the near post from Aidan McGeady's corner. So Hibs have the lead and looking to make it six unbeaten. Now you see, he symbolises the difference in Hibs now because he played in the Edinburgh Derby against Hearts and sold the first goal. He had a shocker and was immediately left out and you think, well, this is going well, isn't it? But there he is, he's back and part of this Hibs revival and good luck to him. He's got a, a, a goal today I just I begin to fear for Kilmarnock I, I don't see them coming away with anything and as I say the right or the wrong sequence of results where Derek McInnes is concerned then it might be bottom tonight well, let's have a look at some wrong answers on the teaser do you want to give us some uh, do you want to give us the question again actually yeah. here? name the last five mainland south or central American players to score for either Celtic or Rangers in all competitions. Now, I did say that this was a big test of geography as well. Token Jester has gone for Cameron Carter Vickers, he's gone for Scott Arfield, James Sands, and Malik Tillman. And the thing that they all have in common is they are North American. Uh, so, North. Canada and the USA do not count. Get your globe out. Have a look at where the North, the South, and the East is, and you'll get the players. I've already got a few. 
No. Uh, let's see if there's yeah. any other wrong answers on here as well. Of course, Mexico doesn't count as well. That's technically North America, yep. along with the US and Canada. Sure. And there is a key word in there as well, mainland. Sit up at the back of the class there. There will be questions asked later. So, there we go. We've got a couple of guesses in for... Gordon DL at the moment. How's he getting on, Hugh? No. No. Okay. Fair Is enough. he not? I don't know where he's from, but he's not on my list. Let's have a look. I'm doing no. Uh, yeah, north. he is from the north. USA. Yep. Yeah, North. So, yeah, he's North American. Yeah, so he doesn't count. Right, okay. Because it's Central and South America. <sighs> I thought he'd moved. Mm. So he'd <laughs> moved. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think there is a. Uh... Is that right? Did see an update there? Oh no, sorry. I was I was getting confused there. I saw it flash up on Twitter, and it said penalty to Rangers, but it's from their B team and academy account. Ah, They're playing ooh. as well at the same time, so not from the first team. It's like the the olden days, Hugh, where yeah. the first teams played. Remember, and the reserves team. Well, you must have been oh, yeah. involved in that. Reserve team played the opposite fixture at the opposite ground. I would have enjoyed that. They were great. They were great times. If Rangers first team played Hearts at uh, Ibrox. Hearts played Rangers at Tyne Castle. I was at Tyne Castle most of the time. Yeah. Um, but you're right, it was fantastic. Three I, o'clock Saturday. I know it's hard to imagine a time before Super Scoreboard, but there was a time before Super Scoreboard when they used to get the half time results and put them up behind the goal. That's how you found out how things were going on elsewhere. On, what, with a board? Yeah, the board, the yeah, golf, that's right. golf leaderboard. Big golf, Just yeah, that. yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, mm hmm. Annan 1, Sterling Albion 0, Aidan Smith scoring, making the most of having a man advantage in that game. There's also been a save from Livingston goalkeeper Shamal George. It was a long-range effort by James Tavernier in that one. Stevie Mays headed just over at uh, Tanadice as well. Still 0-0 between Dundee United and St Johnston. And there was a claim for a handball against Charlie Mulgrew that was turned down. Roger Hanna also says that Alfredo Morelos has had his shirt clearly tugged in the box at Livingston but nothing given. Oh, well. Who's the ref? Andrew Dallas. No, he VAR. Oh, well, is he? Well, sh- yeah. Surely you'd, you'd think they still have a look at that. Um, yeah, the amount of things we're seeing. Roger Hanna will give us the updates and let us know if anything develops there but as it stands still nil-nil between those sides. There is going to be VAR Review with Clyde Built Home Improvements. So it's David Dickinson that's the referee the real deal. at the Tony Macaroni <laughs> Arena. Arena. Yeah, you've been and we'll see a potential <laughs> check for a penalty for Rangers in that game. 0 0 with Livingston. They have had the ball in the net. That one ruled out for offside. Fashion Sakala, it would have been on the score sheet. There's a goal for Stranraer 1 0 up against Elgin City. Scott Robertson with the goal in that game. Still They'll waiting go. on a decision. Dickinson, Mac. Dickinson will take it to the auction. Um, you'd be <laughs> doesn't I, even make sense. Mine's made no. sense. You understand? <laughs> I, 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 I didn't mind you. the real deal one. That was just throwing out any phrase that could vaguely be to do with David Dickinson there. I'll tell you what, it's going to the screen. Oh. It's going to take a look at it. We we have seen it this season where. Uh, was it Willie Collin went to the screen for yeah, the Rangers red the card um, um, Jack, uh, the Ryan Jack potential red card yeah. and, didn't, and didn't overturn his original yeah. decision so it has happened it's happened a couple of times this season we'll see if Roger can see it from the stand mm. though and highlight it then you've got to think referees seen it on the screen penalty Matt, to Rangers Matt, it's given Roger, so this will Roger be, couldn't get Andrew's name right this will be James <laughs> Tavernier's 50th penalty goal for Rangers 50 so this season, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that will not pass without comment on the open line tonight between five and six. Yeah, we'll need to wait and see the footage. But uh, Roger Hanna seemed to think it was pretty clear from where he was sitting. You would expect it will be James Tavernier to stand up and take it in that game. And if he scores, you would probably say that's the three points away already. Yeah, because I don't see Livingston coming back from not that. One nil, no. not. Oh, so is that being rolled <laughs> off? <laughs> it's just blow the whistle. Dickinson, get them off. That's one now. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, but I, I still get Rangers down for the, the goal that was But one nil, one nil will be enough anyway. So, you know, Tavernier, 50th penalty 
scored and I've written it down. There you are, Mark Wilson. Look, I've written it down. I, I don't need to wait. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. James Tavernier sends Shamal George the wrong way and Rangers have a 1 0 lead at the Tony Macaroni Arena. So now the Celtic supporter turns to his mate and says, We get a penalty. What do you think? Yeah, I'm sure we'll hear a lot of that over the next yes. week. Yes, you will. <laughs> Looking forward to the build up to the cup final as well. I'm sure we'll. The build up to the cup final, Andrew, starts at 5 o'clock tonight when people dial 951 1025. That is officially. Under starters' orders for the League Cup final because the arguing and the shouting and the bawling and we will do this, oh no you won't, we will do that to you, oh no you won't, Panto begins at five. Yeah, we'll want to hear from you on the open line from five o'clock, we will be live from Hamden as well next Sunday, looking forward to that one. However, we are only 25 minutes into the three o'clock kickoffs today, five big Premiership games, Celtic 2-0 up on Aberdeen, Hibs 1-0 up against Kilmarnock, Rangers 1-0 up against Livingston, St Mirren beating Ross County by the same scoreline. Of course, a big game tomorrow as well, Motherwell against mm. Hearts, Stuart Kettlewell still in charge of Motherwell for the time being, you wonder whether that will be the case come Monday and you wonder whether that will be the case dependent on what the result is tomorrow as who, well who did they speak to Andrew Motherwell Ian was... Holloway and Grant McCann are the two they've spoken to Jack Ross is no longer in the running is, was John Hughes not mentioned as well at one point I don't think he's been interviewed no. I think I so... think the three as it stands Ian Holloway Grant McCann and then Stuart Kettlewell you'd say is in the picture given that he's led them to one victory already and could put up a good case well, tomorrow way, if he the, can beat Hearts. The way I think Mother will go about their business like most clubs is if Stuart Kettlewell gets a result tomorrow at home, then he'll be firm favourite. Yeah. Um, which we had Motherwell fans on here on Thursday night, delighted with the performance against St Mirren. But they've fallen into that trap before. <laughs> Stevie Hamill got off to a great start against St Mirren. And then went to, I think he lost to St Johnston and then went to Aberdeen at Petaudry and beat them. And all of a sudden, he was the right man for a job. I just, I start to worry clubs go down this road. The caretaker manager comes in. Okay, you can argue uh, Kettlewell's got a bit of manager experience. Gets a couple of results, got a little bit of lift. And all of a sudden, permanent job. And after a while, it just goes from disaster to disaster. Motherwell should know exactly the right character, the right manager they need, and I hope they make the right appointment because they're in a relegation Do you battle. consider Grant McCann or Ian Holloway to be the right man? Uh, no, I don't. Um, but if you, if you put it this way, Hugh, I thought um, somebody made a great point on Thursday night in saying if you had a short list of four, and Stuart Kettlewell hadn't been anywhere near Motherwell, I don't think any Motherwell fan would have wanted him as a manager. I don't think he'd have got the job. But he's in the hot seat just now. Holloway, you've got to remember, as much as I don't think right now, coming from England, don't know the league, don't know the players, don't know a lot about it, the one thing he's got in his CV is, he's got a good CV in the sense of, He's taking Blackpool into the English Premier League. He's a, he's, he's a Premier League manager and you can't knock him for that. He's got great experience. Yes, you can look at a couple of results, a uh, couple of clubs lately that he's not been too successful with. But he as a character, he maybe just changed things about. It'll be interesting to see the road mother will go down for me. A couple of chances around the grounds. One for Kilmarnock. Jordan Jones with a free kick. It was flicked wide by Kyle Vassell's header. Probably should have done better there. And Livingston, the ball going right across the face of goal for them. But no takers. It remains 1-0 to Rangers in that game. Hugh, give us a teaser again because I think they're finding it tough out there. Well, as I said at the start, this is a difficult one. Name the last five mainland. South or Central American players to score for either Celtic or Rangers in all competitions there are, I would say that three of the five should be fairly obvious I think people are maybe just confused by the question a wee bit so I will I'll narrow it down, North America doesn't count, so if they're Canadian, forget about them mm -hmm. if they're from the USA, forget about them if they're from Mexico, forget about them the question also says mainland, central and South America. 
So if they're from an island, Caribbean, Jamaica, mm-hmm. potentially, if you're going down that route, oh, okay. forget that as well. All right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> who, who did you have written down there? Oh, I'm going for roof. Never in there, Jamaican. Okay, my roof does not count because it's mainland Central and South America. Ah, why can we not just go back to easy questions <laughs> instead of this nonsense? I had a 7-2 win on Beat the Pundit last night. 7-2? Seven, seven, two, two, yeah, seven. Yeah. Do you get seven shoes? Yeah, yeah. That must be your highest. I even got the Palmerston Pep texting me to say, well done, old fellow, he said. So That's a fantastic result, Hugh. You're on fire this morning. I, so. am. I am. But we are, we are really struggling. Mark and I are usually quite good at this. But Well, you had, you had Alejandro Bedoya at one point, didn't you? Yes. He's from the US. I know so that, he doesn't but, count. but I didn't know. So we've just had a, a tweet in from M. McLean who says, just checking for teaser, can you confirm that the United States of Arab is not in South America? <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Love by you that make one. one mistake. Exactly. Cool flashes with Clydebilt Home Improvements. Producer Callum, who's sitting to my left. Oh, no. That does not Cover your is. ears. Dundee no. United, nil. St Johnston, one. Stevie May with the close-range finish. There was all the fanfare, the 40th mm. anniversary of the 1983 league winning side. They're all there. Some of them certainly are there today. However, it's 1-0 to St Johnston. The greatest day in Dundee United's history, enshrined in the history forever. But Paul Hegarty can't play. Morris Malpass can't play. Paul Sturrock can't play. You're relying on those who are there at the moment and those who are there at the moment aren't doing enough. And that's a... It was a hard task at the start. It's now a mountain to climb. Yeah, the cross it? came in from the right and it was Stevie May with the goal. Yeah, it's the same old situation. We keep saying it. Oh, Dundee United have got good players. Yes, they have. But are they a good team right this moment in time? No, they're not. Have they got the right man in the dugout? That's a big question. You put a young lad in there, first man in jo- manager's job inexperienced and finding it very very difficult now I'm not saying that you have to be experienced to be a Dundee United manager because Tam Courts proved the, the, you know that wrong but you can't keep continually thinking yeah I'll put an ex- inexperienced manager in there and hoping for the best he's struggling just now he needs a bit of help uh, I know he's assistant manager very well Stevie Crawford uh, very fortunate I played with Stevie as well. He's got a bit of management experience. Um, but I think Dundee United, good players that they've got, are in real trouble. Would Big you, goal uh, for Partick Thistle. Danny Mullen puts them 1-0 up against Air United. It's been a bit of turmoil for them this week with the sacking of Ian McCall last weekend. Chris Doolan taking the team today. Air United also looking to capitalise on the results of Queen's Park and Dundee last night. Unable to do so at the moment. Partick Thistle 1-0 up. The board will be very happy because they said that they had taken the decision to get rid of Ian McCall before the cup tie against Rangers at Ibrooks. Now, they said they wanted to leave themselves time to address the situation with regard to their place in the league. Chris Doolan, scorer of over 100 goals for Partick Thistle. Uh, he's another man doing the audition today. Uh, and that's a very tidy start for him. Yeah, there are a lot of questions being asked about the Partick Thistle board and what's going on there. But one thing that will help them is the fact that the man that's stepping into the managerial job is loved so much by the Partick Thistle fans. That buys you uh, time. Yeah, yeah, well, it does. But we only need to look back to last week. Stevie Hamill, yeah. loved by... Everybody at Motherwell, and he's at a job this week. VAR Review with Clyde Built Home Improvements. A VAR check for Hibs to check if the ball was over the line. Of course, there's no goal line technology, but they will look at the cameras to see if they can work out whether the ball crossed the line or not. I think Chris Stokes for Kilmarnock attempted to clear it off the line, but the goal has not been given. It's not crossed the line. It remains 1 0 to Hibs. Well, that keeps Kilmarnock. In it, had it gone two 0 prior to half time, then sorry, there would be no comeback. But uh, justice has been done because they've had a look, and uh, you know we have to assume that if you're having a look time and time again at a TV screen, you must be getting it right, surely. 
Seems to be a lot of action at the Smyza Stadium between St Mirren and Ross County. Ross County had settled Jordan White and Keith Watson with some decent chances, but St Mirren are coming back now. Tony Watt and Mark O'Hara have had shots blocked in quick succession, so it looks like an exciting game there so far between those two. St Mirren looking to get back on track when it comes to that home record as well because they were so tough to beat there. Was it 12 games unbeaten wow. they had? Yep. Uh, this season at one point before Hibs beat them but we've got intrigue and goals in every game now and the five matches we've got a, at least one goal at every game uh, and lots of intriguing questions still to be answered so the day is progressing very satisfactorily and the good thing for St Mirren touching on St Mirren as much as they've not been in great form it doesn't really matter today because they've got to stay in the top six you wouldn't imagine Aberdeen who are sitting in seventh are going to get anything at Celtic Park so it, get, it stretches that gap if they can get something um, you know and it puts a bit of pressure and they can leapfrog Livingston who are losing um, to Rangers at this moment in time I did like this earlier when it was about the Aston Villa Arsenal game there was pictures floating about before the game in the Aston Villa changing room of John McGinn and well Hollywood royalty oh, oh yeah doubt. Without doubt, one of the greatest actors of Who's all that? time. Who, who? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks and John McGinn just standing about, As you picture do. together. I, what, what did the two of them, what did they talk about? What did Tom Hanks and John McGinn talk about? What have they got? What's, mm. what do they have in common? John, Tom, John, Tom, Tom, Tom Hanks. Toy Story. Tom John, Hanks. John would have been a wee kid when. <laughs> it's like I'm meeting Woody. It's unbelievable. Tom Hanks turns to McGinn Esther and says, Your mum and dad's still in Clyde Bank. <laughs> So think it's, there's been quite a lot of that down south as well in terms of big, big well, names Andy, Will Ferrell's uh, Will been Ferrell doing the rounds at a Andy few Robertson. stadiums Aye. do you know Will Ferrell? do you know who that is? No. yeah I do yeah. I do I do I know who he is um, ugh, listen I've met a lot of famous people myself but I don't tend to put on social media and brag about it you just come in here and brag about <laughs> nonsense. it nonsense <laughs> nonsense I've any, any person that resembles famous you've got a picture with not at all not 100% at all. I've uh, I've had a drink with Burt Reynolds. Mark, um, he'll tell you who Burt Reynolds is. <laughs> you <laughs> had a drink with Burt Reynolds? Yeah, and how on earth did that come about? I was at a football convention thing in Houston in America and uh, Burt Reynolds was actually in the restroom and um, the person I was with knew Burt and uh, we sat down and had a had a, few, a couple of drinks and it was lovely guy, lovely lovely guy. Did he don't like to brag about it though. No, no that's no, what no, I'm no. saying. That's, you're, that's, you're, that's, that's not true. That is a hundred percent. That's true. not true. Hundred percent true. You told us earlier on today that not a true word leaves your lips. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure I'm having it. We're talking about Tom Hanks there. David Friel says John McGinn, Scotland pal James Forrest Gump. Oh. No. The reaction says it all concentrate in the game. For, uh, Aidan McGinney's off with a hamstring injury pulled up as he was breaking forward with the ball, limping heavily. Um, Fraser Wishart said he's been excellent in this game so far. Matthew Hopp coming on, the US Still international. Still a top player. Still a top player, Aidan, but like, what age is he now? 36 maybe, when he's playing in that wide position. Injuries... It could be a, I, I think it could be a great number 10 just off the striker, man. Mm, yep. See if you've got a bit of luxury, you can play him in there and just get him on the ball. He's got good vision, terrific feet, can score goals. I, I, to, I totally agree. I think his days of dropping the shoulder and sprinting by the, the full-back are gone. But I think he's a very intelligent football player for me. Celtic seem to be in the mood today. Gabriel saying that they're toying with Aberdeen. Lots of one-twos around the Aberdeen box. Of course, they're two 0 up at the moment. They've had a few chances as well. It could be more than that. The Celtic fans will be enjoying that one so far at Celtic Park. When yeah. you go two up early on, it just gives you that luxury to play that way. You know, pressure lifts. You can start enjoying your afternoon. Aberdeen camped in, can't get out. Would you think Kyogo second half get a? A run out prior to the no, cup I, I would leave him where he is I would give O as long as I could if the game's going the way yeah. Ange Postecoglou wants him give O the full 90 minutes if you can I or even at that if they want to take him off they can push Maeda through the middle and bring someone else on yeah. would, is that what you would do just not, not risk Kyogo I just wouldn't risk him but look, it, it seems like a, an injury that the slightest wrong fall seems to cause him obviously problems now, that could happen at any time it could happen in training of course but why Why take the risk anyway? You know, you minimise the risk. If you don't need to use him today sitting on the bench, he's not going to lose any physical fitness through missing the game. So 
Leave him on I agree bench. with you. I would be inclined to do the same. I would be looking at the game and thinking, if I don't need you, then I'm taking no risk whatsoever. But I'm just looking at the games. I'm looking at the goals, the results. And so far, the bottom three, we, we always concentrate on the top. Oh. Bottom three, all losing, which is so far good news for Motherwell. But they've still to play a very good Hearts team tomorrow at Fur Park, 12 pm kickoff. A big goal for Airdrie away at Dunfermline. They're 1 0 up. Ben Stanway with the goal. Dunfermline, of course, the leaders of League One. Airdrie in third place, I think, is coming into this game. But last Saturday, Airdrie were three goals <laughs> oh, up yeah. on Dunfermline. They lost 4 3. So uh, that one is certainly far from over. What's wrong with Dunfermline? They have to go a goal down to Airdrie to get going. But th- there you go. Well, if it was a bad day for... Well, actually, I think there's going to be one of these. VAR Review with Clyde Built Home Improvements. I think a penalty has been awarded to Celtic. However, there's going to be a VAR check to see uh, if it was... in the. But actually, there's going to be a check to see if there was an offside in the build-up to which there was no penalty to Celtic. <laughs> Willie so Collins will Collum. love that one. Put yeah. together Willie Collum, VAR, and no penalty. 951 10. That's nothing to do with Willie Collum, though. They're checking whether there's an offside in the build up. So it's either a mistake from the assistant who hasn't put his flag up, or it's the, the VAR then need to check whether when there was Collum's an offside. The, the final arbiter. He should know whether it's offside. Yeah, they'll get, or not. They'll get yeah, but the it's, it's not up to correct. him to put the flag up or not. The referee's not the one that's in charge of. He's up, it's up to him to say, the, the, put your flag back down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a give him that uh, you. You've it, had Willie call on the mind since minute well, one today. Willie could have his best game of the season today. He will not have it yep. at all. He's had a terrible season. <laughs> anyway, it's, it, it, that decision is still nothing to do with Willie Collum. He gave a penalty and uh, there was an offside in the build-up, so it's not been given. And an Athletic 2-0 up against Sterling Albion. Tony Wallace with the goal in that game. Sterling Albion down to 10 men. So you'd think there's a long... Long afternoon in store for them. Uh, Cameron McPherson's corner, punch clear by Mark Berrigetti. St Johnson still 1 0 up against Dundee United. But it's a key point you make there, Gordon, because the teams at the bottom look as if they'd made. Well, I mean, they're already starting to get cut adrift. St Johnson, I think, would go 10 points clear of bottom place. Yeah. That'll, that'll be a really good result for them, won't it? If they can beat Dundee United, I think that would be enough to see St Johnston ease the, the worry about dragged into that. Um, Dundee United, Ross County, Kilmarnock, and obviously Mother will depend on that result tomorrow. They seem to be that small group that are going to be battling for um, you know eleventh and twelfth place. Um, it's very tight down there, but you just need a. F- it's, a it's a league that. Y- you can go and you're losing games, but you're not losing ground. And then a couple of wee results just lifts you out that problem area. But you just wonder, where's Dundee United? Where's Ross County? And certainly Kilmarnock just now. Where's the results coming from? Because if Mother will lose tomorrow and Kilmarnock go on to lose today, there's still a bit of football to be played, I know. Kilmarnock play Motherwell next week. What an important game that's going to be. be interested to see the Celtic incident back because Gabriel, who is at the game, says it was a really strange call because he said the penalty itself that was initially awarded, it didn't look like the foul was even in the box and then an offside see, was given. Well, they call him. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fair enough. I'll give you that one. It's, anyway, a penalty, it is not. And Celtic still lead 2-0 against Aberdeen at Pitodry. Well, they certainly, Celtic can't, Park. Sorry, Celtic Park. Park. Yeah. they certainly can't afford to win 3 0. 2 um, 0, I know it's an uphill battle against a Celtic team, the way they play at Celtic Park, of course it is. But if you happen to grab the next goal, all of a sudden gives you a lift, puts you back in the game. But getting in 3 0 at half time, it's a long 15 minutes in that changing room waiting for the second Aberdeen 45. Getting a goal, Kyogo comes off the bench. What about that? Your old pal Roger Hanna's defending you here. He says, not everything Daz says is a lie. My mate at a local paper in air confirms Daz and his number two were caught sneaking John Burridge into Air United's boardroom late at night. The headline in the local paper was Budgie Smugglers. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, true story. I don't lie. I tell the truth. The whole truth, nothing but the truth. Right, OK, uh-huh. that's around 44 minutes into... Uh, the game still still looking for answers on this first half teaser 
Barry Munoz has said Claudio Canigia. He's oh, I had there. him as well. Where's he from? North? No, no, he's just not in the time frame. Oh, he's from right. South he's America, from but he's not in the right time not frame. Not in the last five. Not in the last five. Neither is Gabriel Amato. No. Nope. Neither is Janino. How many have we got? Janino. Get him off my list. In fact, let's do this now. The first half teaser with the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football for the best football news and opinion online. The last five mainland, South or Central American players to score for either Celtic or Rangers in all competitions. Alfredo Morelos. Diego Laxalt. Emilio Izagheri. Arnold Peralta and Miku and I will let you know the winner once we have it confirmed we'll see whether anyone has managed to get it right I think there is one person that has managed to get it right is that correct? two people okay two people have got it right in first place I'm trying to trying to work this out first place is this one here yes okay there we go first place is Alib who got there first and in second place is Sean McCready so it was a tough one oh, well done guys that really was some tough. of those names you just forget yeah yeah that was that was a tough we one we were nowhere indeed. me and Daz nowhere yeah. Falkirk, Falkirk, and Falkirk 1-0 up against Alloa trying to close the gap on Dunfermline who are 1-0 uh, down to Airdrie at the moment Callum Morrison with that goal there's also been a goal for FC Edinburgh it was a Matthew Allen own goal they're now one all with Montrose should be close to some half-time scores in fact we are at Tanadice Dave Galloway yes Andrew half-time Dundee United nil St Johnson 1 uh, Dundee United quickly out of the traps in this one Behic is shot saved by the legs of Matthews June blazed over from outside the box and Levitt sliced wide from the edge of the D St Johnston came more into things though McPherson saw his low shot easily saved by Birigiti and Montgomery's dangerous ball in was just beyond May the home side were having uh, the lion's share of possession uh, but there were chances at both ends and Saints took the lead in the 32nd minute Halberg crossed in from the right hand side for May to score with a neat first time shot from close range the visitors threatened again with Birigiti's corner punched clear by uh, with, with Birigiti's corner punched clear by actually Birigiti punched the corner clear it was McPherson with a dangerous in-swinging corner uh, right in on top of the keeper he punched that one clear uh, well so St Johnson ending this first half very brightly United's bright start has failed to bear fruit and the atmosphere among their fans has fallen rather flat Uh, Liam Fox has got a lot of tough talking to do at the interval Dundee United nil. St Johnson won yeah, quick turnaround for FC Edinburgh as well. They're now 2-1 up against Montrose. John Robertson with the goal in that game. Plenty of time added on in, in some of the games. It was uh, two minutes added at Celtic Park, two minutes at Hibs, six minutes at Livingston as well. Of course, there was a VAR check for the penalty, two minutes added as well at a St Mirren. But there is a half-time, actually, and it is at Celtic Park. Gabriel. Yes, Celtic 2, Aberdeen 0 at the interval. Superb strikes from Callum McGregor and Rayo Hatate have given the Hoops total control of this match. It was the perfect start for the defending champions, given to them by their captain, Callum McGregor. He scored in the final minute of the game the last time these two met just before Christmas. This time, it only took him two minutes. After some early pressure, the ball popped out to the number 42 who was running into the box. He hammered in a volley at just inside the area. The keeper couldn't get a strong enough hand to it. A few minutes later, Rayo Hatate made it too. He received the ball on the edge of the box. A little shimmy, just getting past defenders, making it look so easy, curling the ball into the far corner. He looks untouchable right now, and Celtic do as well, uh, as they are 2-0 up. And they were just all over the Dons. Maida nearly got on the end of three separate crosses. He could have easily had a hat-trick. Jota was running riot on the right wing. Uh, Hatate had another couple of efforts uh, straight down the throat of the Don's goal and Celtic's attackers were literally just playing one-twos in the Aberdeen box despite the numerous red shirts packing the area out. Now Celtic thought they had a penalty just before the whistle but VAR rightly ruled out 
for an offside uh, on Jota in the build-up. The final chance of the half fell to Matt O'Reilly, fed by Hitate. A lovely chop and a right-footed effort across the goal like it was going in, but well saved by Jay Gorta in the Dons net. The Dons have hardly gone forward. They've got to offer more if they want to salvage anything from the game or just keep it uh, at this scoreline. Celtic are on easy street, but Postacoglu want more in the second half. Half-time here, Celtic 2, Aberdeen 0. Also half-time in Paisley, David Friel. Half time, Andrew St. Man won North County. Now I spoke about St. Man's injury problems before the game, all the missing players, but you wouldn't have known that judging by this 45 minutes. Stephen Robinson's side have been excellent, they've been relentless at times, and they'll probably feel they could be further ahead. The only goal came in seven minutes. Ryan Strain's corner was perfect. Declan Gallagher's header, unstoppable from six yards. St. Man were really, really good in that first half hour. Ryan Strain, what a find he's been. He had a short save, they volleyed over. He was absolutely everywhere. Ross County took a while to settle, but they did. Then wasted a great chance on the half hour mark. Keith Watson made a George Harmon corner, but volleyed over at the back post. Malcolm Mackay said, did come on to a game a wee bit. Jordan quite a low shot save, but Smith kept pressing. Tony Watt, Mark Harry, both the chances, but County defended well. St. Man are definitely on top here. County will need to up it in the second half to get anything out of this game. Half time, St. Man 1 North County now. It's also half time at Easter Road, Fraser Wisher. Tessa Bernin 1, Kilmarnock 0, Hibs ahead, but it could have been more to be honest. Kelly keeper Sam Walker made a string of good saves as Hibs have dominated possession the first 45 minutes, but only a Will Fish headed goal to show for all their good play. They started really well, the home side took the initiative, moving the ball quickly, putting pressure on the Kilmarnock goal, but the first chance came at the other end in 11 minutes, first real venture forward by Kilmarnock, a short corner, Jordan Jones crossed the ball into six yard box, flicked by Chris Stokes at the near post, really good sharp save by Marshall to touch the ball over, deserved opener came 16 minutes, they're all Hibs good players, a very simple goal, corner on the right hand side, Aidan McGeady, the outswinger, pulled it in with pace, and Will Fish, somehow, all alone at the near post, fired a header high into the net from 8 yards, McGeady was in really good form, sharp on the ball, number of teasing crosses, causing problems for the Kilmarnock defence, but up at the other end, in 24 minutes, good chance for Kilmarnock, Jordan Jones involved again, drove a free kick, into the penalty box, eight yards out, Kel Vassell got space, I don't think he realised he had, him, had a bit of space, he tried to flick head the ball when he should just have got his forehead onto it, and he headed wide when he should have done better and hit the target, but after that, it was all hips, lovely back heel by Josh Campbell, set up the in form, Ellie Yuan in the box, he struck the ball well, good save by keeper Sam Walker to his right, Walker then, again called into action two minutes later, down to his left, to parry a fierce Ewan Anderson left foot shot from the edge of the box then Henderson saw his shot from six yards cleared off the line by Chris Stokes VAR checked and said no goal but a real blow for Hibbs 33 minutes Aidan McGeady who had been excellent pulled up with a hamstring injury as he sprinted forward with the ball and he left the pitch really unhappy and it looked a sore one as he limped quite heavily then another walker save kept it one just before the break when he pushed a Chris Cadden shot away for a corner kick big questions for Derek McInnes they've been under Hibs pressure all 45 minutes not playing well at all hardly near Marshall's goal but still in it it's only a goal behind I'm not sure there's too many options on the bench to change things in attack Hibs been excellent fans enjoying the performance half time Easter Road have been in one come on up nil well the only half time we're waiting on is Livingston against Rangers Livingston currently 1-0 down it was a James Tavernier penalty in that game, Roger Hanna says they're still playing there. Of course, it was a bit of a delay for the penalty, a VAR stoppage, it was. Well, um, you, therefore, you've got no complaint over the time added on. Uh, it be interesting to hear, Roger, because when you're a goal up through a penalty, and that's it from you in the first half, it be interesting to hear how Roger assesses Rangers' performance other than the penalty kick which has given them the lead because it, it, from this distance it doesn't sound as if they're having won their besties well let's hear from Roger Hanna now yeah Livingston nil, Rangers won at the break Andrew and it's a deserved win for Rangers they have been by far and away the better side in the first half the lead from a 24th minute penalty from James Tavernier more of that in a minute but it could have been ahead inside 10 minutes a decent move down the left hand side the ball finishing up with Alfredo Morelos he knocked it into the 6 yard box Fashion Sakala came in off the right it was an easy finish at the near post the only problem was he was about a yard offside when he knocked it past Jamal George a late flag from the linesman didn't even need to go to VAR play on there and George then called into action and he make a save a long range shot by the Rangers captain James Tavernier and then the flashpoint in the first half a ball in from the left, Morelos going up at the back post between two defenders, it looked clear to me, James Penrice, the young Livingston left back, looked to have a big handful of Morelos' shot, pulling him down ball went for a corner, referee David Dickinson gave the corner, then got the signal from the VAR, he listened for a moment then went to the pitch side screen for a look himself and unsurprisingly gave the penalty which Tavernier dispatched easily 50th penalty for Rangers, sending George the wrong 
Well, I think we've lost Roger Hanna there. There is some technical difficulties. We will see if we can get back to him. But uh, it is half time across all the divisions. And I'll give you all the scores next. The fastest goals. The expert opinions. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Hugh Keevans here with me, Andrew McLean. Halftime scores all around Scotland. We've got the top team all around the grounds. In the Premiership, the halftime scores Celtic 2, Aberdeen 0, Dundee United 0, St Johnston 1, Hibs 1, Kilmarnock 0, Livingston 0, Rangers 1, St Mirren 1, Ross County 0. In the Scottish Championship, it's Air United 0, Partick Thistle 1, Cove Rangers 0, Arbroath 0, Inverness 0, Hamilton 0. In League 1, it's Clyde 0, Peterhead 0, the Fairman nil, Airdrie one, Falkirk one, Alloa nil, Kelty Hearts nil, Queen of the South nil, Montrose one, FC Edinburgh two, and in League two it's Annan two, Stirling Albion nil, East Fife one, Dumbarton nil, Elgin nil, Stranraer one, Stenhouse Muir nil, Albion Rovers nil, and in England the early kickoff. In the Premier League, it was Aston Villa 2, Arsenal 4 in a really good game there. In the 3 o'clock kickoffs, Brentford 0, Crystal Palace 0, Brighton 0, Fulham 0, Chelsea 0, Southampton 1, Everton 0, Leeds 0, Nottingham Forest 0, Manchester City 1 and Wolves 0, Bournemouth 0. We'll give you the second half next. I started to lose hope of ever finding the one, but then I saw them online. We met in person and they looked exactly like their photo. As soon as they touched my face, I knew we were made for each other and I just couldn't believe attractive, well-put-together glasses were available elsewhere. Don't fancy the frames at your opticians? Specsavers is available. Bring in your prescription and get two for one from £69 with single vision lenses to the same prescription. Ask in store for details. Using my Barclay card forward credit card to pay for the stuff I need now and paying back on time could help build up my credit score for the day I need something bigger. So buying weights for my workout, smashed it, or a set of headphones could help in the future when I buy my first car. Now that's forward thinking. Check if you're eligible at barclaycard.co.uk. 33.9% APR representative variable subject to application financial circumstances and borrowing history. T's and C's apply. Responsible use of a credit card can help build your credit score when you pay on time. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Jaguar. Buy your next car or book your MOT service or repair online. Scottish football's league leader. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Well, the second half's just kicking off around Scotland. There is a full time as well from the Scotland women's national team. They beat the Philippines 2-1 in the Pinatar Cup. The goal's coming from Lauren Davidson and Rachel Corsi. So they're bouncing back from that defeat to Iceland a couple of days ago. They play Wales on Tuesday night. We're certainly back underway between Dundee United and St Johnston. Something I did want to touch on was an interesting banner from the Rangers support away at Livingston and it says two trophies in 11 years uphold the standards that matter so is that a dig towards Michael Beale and what happened last weekend? If it is it's childish leave it alone the man did the right thing against Partick Thistle he protected Malik Tillman in the process and he upheld uh, Rangers name at the same time If this is being regarded as the sort of thing that fans don't want to see, then what do they want to see? Do they want to see cheating? Do they want to see win at all costs? Do they want to see never mind the club's image, just get over the line? Um, He's in the right, they're in the wrong. Has the level of debate surprised you, Mark, just on... You know, the fact that some Rangers fans feel so strongly against Partick Thistle being given the goal. Yeah, yeah, I I find it a strange one. We chatted about it midweek that, you know, it it was the right thing to do. I think we we can all agree in in this room, but there's ways of winning games and and it certainly wasn't the way to win games. You know, if if I was a supporter of that team, I would have been proud of my manager and my club for having the courage to stand there and make that decision. Remember, it's a split second decision, so... No, right decision for me. I don't think we've kicked off yet at Celtic Park for the second half. Any signs of changes, Gabriel? Nothing for Celtic. They're coming out with the same 11, but there has been one change for the Dons. It's Bojan Miofsky off, Hayden Coulson on. Uh, Just trying to work out how that means the Dons will shape up. 
Could be very, it looks like it's going to be a similar shape for them, but could only be one up top. Duke, yeah, Hayes is coming back on now. So it looks like Hayes will be pushed forward, perhaps to support Duke up top. Coulson on a left wing back role. So more defensive substitution for the Dons. That just shows you uh, it could be damage limitation for Barry Robson and his men. But no change for Celtic. Uh, Matt O'Reilly over the ball, and we are underway for the second half. Yeah, pushing Johnny Hayes further up. Is that a case of just trying to get that extra pace in the final third to try and hit Celtic on the counter if possible? You would think so, but I don't know how much good it's going to do. He could have probably looked at his bench and put anybody on there to try and make an impact. But when Celtic are in this form, it's, it's really difficult to get close to them, especially when you give them two goal a lead within the first 15 minutes. So, ah, long 45 minutes. I think, for I think Johnny Rose. Hayes is our best bet for what you call a ball carrier. You've got to get up the pitch. Johnny Hayes is good ability. He's got good pace. But the most difficult thing, and just listening to a report there, uh, from Celtic Park is the fact that they're not getting much of the ball. It's all about Celtic and how many they score. I think Postacoglu will be looking for more goals in the second half. Well, I think two managers that may be unhappy with first half performances have both made triple substitutions. Derek McInnes, Alston, Stokes and Jones off. Taylor, Polworth and Robinson on. And for Ross County as well. They're 1-0 down to St Mirren, Awura Edwards, Guion Edwards and Ross Callaghan all on. And David Friel just trying to work out exactly who has come off for them. So they'll be looking for a big impact in the second half. Two teams down the bottom of the table. And clearly the manager's just looking to roll a dice, hoping that they get a different second half. Yeah, sometimes you can, as a manager, you can gun, um, you can look at it and think, right, I'll wait and see if my halftime team talk has any effect. And then I'll make the substitutions. Or you just know... Uh, by the time the referee blows the whistle for half time that you're going to be positive you've got to make those changes you're not going to wait for the usual 60 minute uh, mark and you've got to be positive especially when you're down the bottom of the league especially when you're fighting for points and uh, I am not surprised these substitutions have been made you've got a bottom four separated by three points and the road never has a turning for them it just goes in the same old dreary fashion week in, week out and that's why tomorrow's game uh, at Fir Park is so vital for Stuart Kettlewell and all at Motherwell because that could change the complexion. Two wins in four days. Right, the first half teaser was tough so let's give the listeners as much time as possible for this. And now just a quick note from our podcast sponsor Lookers, the new name for Taggarts across Glasgow and the West. We are proud to announce that Lookers is now the new name for Taggarts. Taggarts has been part of the Lookers Motor Group for nearly 20 years and over time, being part of one of the largest multi-franchise dealer groups in the UK and Ireland has helped Taggarts to provide a great customer experience, value and choice to their customers across Scotland and that's something that will never change. And now they've decided though to change the name above the door to move forward as one. You'll find the same great service and friendly faces you've come to know at their Jaguar, Land Rover and Volvo showrooms, working hard to give the best experience every time you can now browse and shop online for your next car at lookers.co.uk and choose from thousands of used cars in stock with home delivery available you can also discover the latest new car offers book a test drive and book your next service online although the name has changed above the door everything else is staying exactly the same and you can still expect the same great service and friendly faces when you visit in store lookers the new name for taggarts across glasgow and the west I'm a British gas money-saving engineer, helping protect homes and wallets. Home care covers your heating, plumbing, electrics and drains, but most of all, it helps protect you from surprise repair bills. The last thing anyone needs right now. So if anything goes wrong, we'll be around to put it right. And if you buy British gas home care now, you get your first three months half price. Bish, bosh, less dosh. Search British gas boiler cover. Offer ends 20th of February. Excludes home care basic. Features vary across products. Geographical restrictions and terms apply. I started to lose hope of ever finding the one, but then I saw them online. We met in person and they looked exactly like their photo. As soon as they touched my face, I knew we were made for each other and I just couldn't believe attractive, well-put-together glasses were available elsewhere. Don't fancy the frames at your opticians? Specsavers is available. Bring in your prescription and get two for one from £69 with single vision lenses to the same prescription. Ask in store for details. The second half teaser. With the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football. For the best football news and opinion online.
I have played alongside Kenny Miller and Robert Snodgrass. I've been managed by Neil Warnock and Lee Clark. I won both Scottish Domestic Cups, but only played in one of the two finals. I have played for clubs in five countries across three continents. Who am I? A lot of information. Played alongside Kenny Miller and Robert Snodgrass. Managed by Neil Warnock and Lee Clark. Won both Scottish Domestic Cups, but only played in one of the two finals. And I've played for clubs in five countries across three continents. Who am I? Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Well, those changes have not worked for Kilmarnock because Hibs 2-0 up. Matthew Hopp, his first goal for the club. He came on as a first-half substitute for the injured Aidan McGeady. Hibs have a second and Derek McInnes will not be happy because he'll have been looking for an instant impact and it's had the opposite effect. Well, I'd have to say they won't come back from that. Um, And Hibs, I think, can only gather strength from that and the crowd behind them and the are looking in a positive direction. They're looking in an upward direction and they could overtake Livingston and go fourth today. So, Kilmarnock, as I say, Kilmarnock, Motherwell, Ross County, Dundee United, the road never seems to have a positive turning. Stenhouse Muir 1-0 up against Albion Rovers. Nat Wedderburn with the goal. Inverness 1-0 down to Hamilton. Look at the ball with the goal in that game. Uh, John Livingston Rankin. are back out unchanged for them. Roger Hanna still waiting on the Rangers team to come out. John Rankin's a good story at Hamilton Mackey's. They, they look doomed, done and dusted. But he's hung in there, hung in there. And they could go joint bottom. They're bottom now, but joint bottom with our broth. Uh, and they're not that far away from Cove Rangers either. So Is our broth not winning? Are they winning? Well, actually, let's see if we can go back to Roger Hanna to see if there's any sign of Rangers changes. No, no changes. We'll just just come back out onto the pitch there. Livingston kick off for the second half. Young Stephen Kelly, who I think was the former Rangers player, the only booking of the first half ready to get is underway. David Martindale will expect a whole lot more from Livingston in this second half. Rangers, of course, leading from that penalty by James Tavernier midway through the first half. They could perhaps have been more ahead. They'll look for more in the second half. We're just underway at Tony Macaroni. Yeah, an interesting second half to come there and to come all around the grounds in Scotland. Rangers ahead, of course, a James Tavernier penalty for them. An early second half goal for Hibs, the only one in the Premiership of the second 45 so far. No, one that Kilmarnock didn't want to see happen. Uh, So tomorrow's game at Motherwell, Motherwell Hearts. What an incentive for Stuart Kettlewell and those Motherwell players. They could start to put a little daylight between themselves and their fellow strugglers, so huge game for them. Goal for Tavernier there, but it's for Tavernier Jr. Marcus Tavernier, James's younger brother, scoring for Bournemouth against Wolves. And is that a We've bit of celebration a... there from Mark Wilson? Yeah, is that the, the teaser, second half teaser? That was, that okay. was Andrew. Good yeah, teamwork there, Mark. Well done. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if. Uh... Still to receive your information. How, ah, how well, I'd, 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 I'd just give you a, a bit of my information and you just put the ball you know in the back. Was, in you it? know what's funny? You know, my first guess. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm going to say? There's a there's a tie in there. My first guess to the Don't give ever anything away. No, no, no. Well, they don't know who my first guess was. Don't give anything away. Yeah, but there is a tie in there. So uh, it was close. We will have that on Twitter. I'm not sure if it's up there yet, but we will get that oh, on there for you no, to see. Nobody got it yet, SSB. <laughs> I can't <laughs> see any maybe quite to keep correct up answers as of yet. That's two, um, two weeks in a row, I think I've got that. It was maybe two weeks ago when I was in here. I was think, it two weeks ago? I think you got it quite quickly that week as well. Um, Must be your intellect rubbing off on me. I did see your tweet midweek, Andrew. Mm. Your stat. The stat. Unbelievable. It's all right. It was not bad, was it? Oh, it was great. You're very much into that, Andrew, and I've got to applaud you. I think you're very good at it. Um, it's, a, would, it's a kind way of calling me just like a football geek. Yeah, yeah, there's something, there's something coming, there's something coming I, next year. I uh-huh. certainly wouldn't like to spend my Saturday nights with you, let me tell you. I think it'd be a very boring. <laughs> Don't worry, evening. I would not like to spend my Saturday nights with you <laughs> yeah. either. I do not want to know what you get up to. <laughs> At all, guess many have to go a ball, um, but no, it was a very good start. I've got to say. What was it again? Oh, it the Motherwell was, team. Yeah, it, St. Mirren had uh, more appearances for Motherwell in their starting eleven than Motherwell did out of the two starting elevens. Was it as simple as just 
counting all the appearances. Yeah, I mean, it was it was an idea I had in my head looking at the two squads. I thought there was a chance that right. it could be the case, and then at that point, you just need to sit there and work it out, which is the boring part, mm-hmm. and then double check and triple check because if you then put that out there and it's wrong, then people can have a laugh yeah. at you. Do you get I, much love? Do you get much? Like a, Reaction from yeah, it? Like quite a few retweets. Did you? Yeah, not bad. Any big hitters retweet it? Um, that stole your. Not sure. Stuff? I think there was maybe a few. I don't know. There's the usual accounts as well that always sort of screenshot and then put on their, I don't know, accounts called like Fitba Patter and stuff like that oh, that just decide to, to screenshot stuff and put them out there. That's just lazy from them. Let's call them it. Mm hmm. Have you any Andrew today, didn't know Andrew? what I call them out there. He just went quiet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I was listening. Produ- producer Michael was saying that uh, it was described in his group chat as the greatest as Scottish football stat ever, which, in fairness, I think is a bit far, but it was all right. It was not bad. Hmm. Have you any today? Have you brought any to the table? No? Or are you just. Just having fun with you guys. That's it. Just, having a, just having a nice, relaxed afternoon. That's so all. you're a one star a week wonder, is that what you're trying uh-huh. to say? One a season. That's it. One a season. A chance for Ross County, Ross Callaghan over the bar from the edge of the box. Ross County have definitely improved, says David Friel from their triple change. A Dave Galloway saying impressive trickery by Dan Phillips in the box for St Johnson. Dundee United managing to clear. Dan Phillips has been a really good, good addition player, to that man. St Johnson yeah. team, hasn't he? Really, really good, good to watch. Are you surprised that Ange Postecoglou didn't bring on any fresh faces? No, no, not at all. Um, I think he'll have a game plan now. We'll wait to the... 65, 70 minutes and then usual three or four subs whatever it may be um, <clears throat> but they're in cruise control there the three points are probably in the bag unless Aberdeen produce something that we don't know they've got in their locker but the rest of the games take Hibs out of the equation, the rest of the games Dundee United, Livingston, St Mirren still in the balance oh. David Friel's got the teaser, he's got it right yeah. Oh, we've all done that in fact, yeah, he, to be fair he sent me the on. message at Keep up posting. Sev- 7 minutes past 4 I'd need to go back and see whether you got got there beforehand it's mm. oh, a while ago uh, there are a few wrong answers uh, coming through at the moment as well I'm not sure I've seen any correct answers so far but Mark has it right as does David Friel there's not been too many goals down the divisions in the second half so far as well there is a reduced Championship card as there were two games on last night. Queen's Park, of course, having to play. Still playing their games at Oakleview, which is interesting. Oh. I think a lot of that may be to do with the fact that it's going well for them at the moment. They maybe don't want to shake things up too much when they're near the top of the table and have yeah. that shift to Lesser Hamden when promotion could be is around it, the corner. Is it complete? Is it ready to go? Not Probably 100% so. clear, but it is close to close it anyway. To it. Yeah. They, they had been targeting this. January at first and then I'd heard February but um, I think I think they're quite happy and settled where they are and it's it's maybe just a case of waiting they and could be see what happens. a premiership club with a 2,000 capacity is that what it is? 2,000? Yeah. yeah So chance for Celtic early in the second half Maida slashes that one wide uh, an O'Reilly curled effort as well went straight to the keeper hmm. oh, that's okay if they no it's not if they sell out oh, 2,000 Oh, there's, there's been less yeah. going to Premiership games before Name one there? Name one Livy Livy get, Livy get more than 2,000 St. Johnson St. Johnson get more than 2,000 mm, Come on oh, Hamilton When they were there No, no, no Premiership just now oh, That's Hamilton were in the Premiership for years a, a, a lot of Livingston home attendances are Have been around the 1,000 Above that mark Thank you, Andrew. Between 1 and 2,000 That's certainly. a man that knows his stats When Hamilton no. were in the division See before we get into further Thanks, Nobody Andrew. brought you into the conversation <laughs> Thanks Andrew The great thing is I could just fade your mic I, 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 could, I could just fade your mic down at any time And then you're not part of the conversation How's that working out for you? <laughs> so I was just saying you know, I, I, <laughs> he, he was trying to test me And I gave him answers right away And Andrew <laughs> confirmed him I think I've face. won that argument He's going He's looking down at Hamilton Hamilton <laughs> That's not a bad thing If they get a decent crowd in There's always going to be a decent away crowd there as well We'll sell it out Good atmosphere A Fraser Wishart saying Queen's Park could rent Hamden Get 100,000 in in total For the games against Celtic and Rangers across the season but You can't do that We surely. spoke about this right last I think week there are any rules against it well, so, so why does why does the smaller clubs in no go and rent uh, when Rangers Celtic come? I mean, they don't have the facilities for it really to go out. Hamden, uh, Queens Park have that link with Hamden that they had previously. But are surely you, there's uh, going to be some rule that the stadium that you start the season, the season and but then Queens Park are playing in 
Stenhouse Muir Stadium at the moment and will then move to but Lesser Hamden at some point I, this I, season I take it that was agreed upon before the start of the season and they could only move if there was one a Stenhouse Muir game Hearts only played some games weeks. at Murrayfield did Celtic not play a game yeah, but, at Murrayfield but, as well but, 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 but were they not getting um, they, something no, was there's on reasons the behind it yeah. I'm just saying that right. you, don't, you don't have to play every single game so surely, surely if you're Queen's Park they could rent Hamden for the season Fraser Wishart says Celtic did that when uh, yeah, Fergus McCann was getting, there but the, the, point, the point is surely Park. work construction being done in a stadium or a pre-arranged thing surely you can't just look at the biggest fixtures and say right, we'll, we'll have Hamden because we can sell it out that mm-hmm. cannot be allowed yeah is it? I don't know, don't know. we'll see <laughs> that's Fraser Fraser brought yeah. it up he, he, he seems to be saying that they could rent Hamden for the season if they wanted to which sure. I don't see. I don't see. No, no, no. They could, but also they to use for, lesser Hamdens. That's what Fraser trying to say here, because I think Fraser will have that wrong. The head of PFA oh. Scotland. No, I think Fraser's trying to say they could rent Hamden for a season, right, in the for in the Premier League, which is right. But what the, we were trying to get here to the bottom of is if lesser Hamden is their ground named at the beginning of the season, right, as their home ground. Surely, when Rangers and Celtic pitch up, they can't say, "Well, we'll just rent." Uh, Hamden and full 30,000 or whatever may come along surely that's not not allowed we'll need to wait and see we'll need to wait and see if they get promoted all hypothetical of course but more immediately Andrew that we're all going to Hamden next uh, well next weekend the state of that pitch will be of great interest because Ange Postacoglu and Michael Beale both said very uncomplimentary words about it when they played their semi-final ties there so I know that the work has been done on it. It better have been good work. This never seems to be a, a problem that goes away at Hamden, though. I know. The surface. I mean, even back to when I, I used to play there, you get semi-finals. One the Saturday, one the Sunday. Surely the National Stadium should be able to host that. Across the years, I'm not just talking about this year. So whatever the problem is, they continually say work's been done and we've put in a new pitch. Always seems to result in the same thing. Get to this stage of the season Everybody's saying What's going on here? Nobody how, plays in it all year How can I blame this on Willie Collum? <laughs> <laughs> We've not heard too much of his name Since that incident in the first half Let's go through uh, Some wrong answers on the teaser Can you give us a teaser again, Hugh? Yes, I have played alongside Kenny Miller And Robert Snodgrass I've been managed by Neil Warnock And Lee Clark I won both Scottish Domestic Cups But only played in one of the finals I've played for clubs in five countries across three continents. Who am I? Peter Gray says El Hadj Juf. No. Uh, Mark Sloan is going for Yusuf Malumbu. No. Uh, Cartoon Cami says Kenny McLean. Kenny McLean, no. Gray MacDonald says Oliver Burke. Mm. Um, Oliver Burke's got around, but I don't think we're yet into the territory of five countries and three continents. OK, well, a bit of work to be done on that teaser. Mark Wilson has already got it. David Friel has already got it as well. Uh, Ross County claiming for a penalty after Carson barges into Awura Edwards. Malky Mackay going absolutely mental. Uh, David Friel saying he doesn't even think it was checked. Well, Malky was on the receiving end of a, a decision at Ibrox earlier in the season which he described as inexplicable. So, uh, be interested to hear what he has to say if... That decision costs him all three points. But surely, you know, saying it's not even been checked, surely it's got to be checked. I know the, the old signal, the referee holding his hand there to his are different ear. Things. The, the whole game essentially gets checked yeah, as you go through, and then there are official checks. So clearly the VAR has just decided he doesn't think there's enough in it to do a, a proper full mm. official But they still review. get checked. That's, yeah. that's a bigger picture. There's either way, you'll say it's Willie Collins' fault. So. Yeah, but oh, either that or... They just don't know how to work it. It's anti-football, it should be scrubbed, and it's making a mockery of the game in England and in Scotland. Good to bring you a bit of positivity on a Saturday mm-hmm. afternoon. And it will decide the, the cup final next weekend as well. And then you'll be sorry, because the telephones will go through the roof here. But it might decide the cup final with the correct decision. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Cool. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in, in Scotland, they only go to VAR to think of a way to try and disallow a goal. Leal Abada coming on for Celtic. We'll see who that is for in a second. Ryan Duncan will also be coming on for Aberdeen. Leighton Clarkson off for him. 
David Frail, just a bit more information on that Ross County one. He says it was an odd one. Aware at Edwards trying to keep the ball in. Carson kind of barges him. They both go for it. Um, he assumes the officials just think it's a 50 50. What do they know? <laughs> Or does David Friel know? We'll see. We'll need to wait and see what the uh, David, see what the incident is like. David Friel is an old hack like me. He knows everything. Three changes for Celtic, Abada, Haksabanovic and Iwata coming on. Oh. See who comes off. Is that potentially going to be a rest for Callum McGregor with Iwata coming off? We don't see him rested too often. You'd, well, yeah, you, you could see think. that, yeah. He plays a lot of football. He's a, a fit lad. usually comes off. Atati is usually in there to come off, but they just get an embarrassment of riches. I've had to come Callum off. McGregor stays on. It's yeah. Maida, O'Reilly, and Jota that come off. So you'd assume that Callum McGregor will push further forward. That'll be uh, Iwata playing in the, the deeper role, and then straight switches really for Abada, Haksabanovic on for Maida and Jota. So O stays on. Yeah, I think that's a psychological move on the part of Ange Postacoglu. He's obviously very keen to see if he can get another goal. It's, Two goals in successive weekends at Celtic Park. It would lift his confidence. He's got half an hour left in which to do it. Uh, so I think Ange Postacoglu is showing that he would very much like O oh, to to further his career at Celtic. Well, I called it three substitutions round about the 65-minute mark. Great prediction. He only well, does that every single week. Well, no, he he does every it. single no, he game. Does not. Pretty much. He makes two or three around the 62nd well, minute you go, pretty you much went, every you've game. You've been back down to two. All of a sudden, <laughs> you get one start during the week and you think you know everything. <laughs> you just need to calm down a little bit. Um, <laughs> did uh, Burt Reynolds tell you this when yeah. you were having yeah. your yeah. Andrew? Yeah. No, no. He's done down again. No, it was just obviously being a teammate of Andrew I know the way he thinks um, so I'll be interesting to see how the substitutions I would love I need to take him along I need to ask him one no, day. Just I need take to him ask him whether oh, he, the big cuddles the big hugs and I'll wear my, my round neck jersey I can almost and guarantee he's going to have absolutely no idea Absol- absolutely no idea I will guarantee you I've never forgotten did you not originally say that you you think you'd played against him and then it all came out in the loss that you were actually his teammate <sighs> and yeah, Andrew, I'm, I'm not one of these guys like Mark that go, oh, I played there, I've done this, I've done. I'm not, I'll, I just gently We did it. establish earlier on that you didn't really care about your football career, I you just, just like the short days and... It was work, everybody's got to work, turn a living, feed your family, uh, we all know that, it was work, um, I don't get carried away with it, I, knew it I know I'm now a bigger <laughs> cel- celeb than I, I was when I played, but I just... Um, I know Ange very well and I'll guarantee you next time he sees me it will be an em- embrace, a hug, a pat in the back, a yeah, fist yeah, yeah. bump. And you had three wedding cakes to pay for. Mm. <laughs> what exactly. about that for a comeback? <laughs> it's now Annan Athletic 2, Sterling Albion 2. Goals in quick succession. They got Blair Curry sent off the goalkeeper mm. earlier on Sterling Albion. They went two goals down. They've now clawed that back to 2 all. Mm. What was the best job you ever had then? Um, in your life I, I, I loved working for East Coast Bride Parts Department <laughs> I, I really enjoyed, <laughs> what I, enjoyed did you do there? I lined the pitches for people that played on a Saturday um, drove the dumper truck oh uh, that sounds good oh fantastic on the roads what age were you at this point? Uh, about 44 uh, no <laughs> I was I was in between my football career I was sort of a, a, a in uh, between your football and career, what does yeah, that well, mean? well, basically, does that basically, I was, I, I was a very up and coming star. Because the I side then, of every top class footballer is the fact that they have to pick up a job on the side. The, then, then I was <laughs> dumper truck to the training ground. Then is that I was, a new motor you've got. The, then I was a star, and I became a has been at the very early age of twenty four, twenty five. I had to go out into the real world. That eight hours a day killed me. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Good, good banter with the lads at the school bride. Uh, department um, and then I went back into football I took a break I was like Guardiola I took a year out uh, but I he- was like Guardiola <laughs> I took I took a year I took a year away from the game just to get my mind at, uh, at the right place VAR Review with Clyde Built Home Improvements there's a check at Easter Road potential serious foul play by Kyle Vassell 2-0 down to Hibs at the moment and they could be down to 10 men as well John Beaton going to the screen mm, never bodes well but, does it apart no. from the, the one that Willie Colm looked at and, and didn't deem it a red card 
So Vassell, Vassell's had a trouble spell on the face. It looks a good player. Looks strong. Looks lively. Has he scored. Has he scored, he scored yeah, one, one goal. One. A lot of responsibility put on him straight away, though, because not only did Kilmarnock let Kyle Lafferty go on the final day of the transfer window, Ollie Shaw as well. So he's kind of been thrust in and, and been Dodge asked to can't score, score all the goals. Either. Yeah, Doyle struggles in front of goal, so that's Kelly's problem. Well, he's not going to be able to score is the off? rest of today's game because he is off. And Kilmarnock have, well, you've got to say, almost no way back for them. We've seen Sterling Albion do it from 2 0 down with 10 men, but very unlikely that Kilmarnock get did, back into did that. Did you game. say, Daz Lillard, that next week Kilmarnock play Motherwell? Yes, you do it at Rugby Park. So they'll do so without Kyle Vassell. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's a huge game for them. Particularly if Motherwell were to get anything out of the Hearts game tomorrow. So it's just not going in anything like a positive direction there was the loss of uh, Kyle Lafferty with Derek McInnes saying that it had nothing to do with him and he wasn't all that happy with the idea of Lafferty going he's now in that Northern Ireland isn't he? Yes, Linfield, Linfield. Uh, and now Vassell will not play because of suspension next weekend it's not, not running Derek McInnes's way one thing I did enjoy, I saw that Linfield had tweeted after Kyle Lafferty had made his debut and you know how sometimes they'll tweet and it'll have like a tick list of things that players achieved on their debut, played mm. 80 minutes. One of the things that they listed for Kyle Lafferty in his debut was clean sheet. You count a striker? Yeah, clean sheet. Yeah. See, is he getting credit for I, that? You really? defend from the front. So, yeah, you've got to... It's okay you scoring all the goals, but if you defend from the front, you've got to take the praise as well. Oh, um, it's not that when... <laughs> when the team loses a goal the yeah. user standing up there on the halfway line shaking her head Fraser Wishart giving a bit more detail on that red card he said Kyle Vassell had the ball it bounced head high and he put his foot up to get it he caught Cabraya uh, but it didn't even it didn't even cross Fraser Wishart's mind that it was a yellow never mind a red oh, but he'd need to yeah. see it again see? sometimes well, you don't always catch it on, on first view and in fairness the referee didn't think it was on first view went to the screen and John Beaton then decided it was a red card, so it maybe didn't look like it on first viewing at full speed, but has decided that Kyle Vassell deserved to be sent off for that one. Waste of time, mockery of football, scrap it. Ross <laughs> County pressing now, trying to get back in the game. Guion Edwards had a shot deflected by Joe Shaughnessy. Charlie McGrew for Dundee United also having one deflected for a corner. It was initially given as a yellow card. Beaton was right next to it and, and was then, then called upgraded. to the screen. Well, it'll be interesting to see. We, we've not seen it yet, seen the pictures, but Fraser there. Um, I account witness, uh, as much as the fans, be a lot of fans here, probably think the same as Fraser. But so many odd decisions this year where I, I don't think it will ever be scrapped. I think it will get better, it will get fine tuned. Yeah, remember, it's our first season with it. Look at the problems in the billion dollar league just down the road. And they've had it for a lot longer than they've we had have as well. Longer, yeah. A not good for Marvin Bartley Kelty Hearts 1 Queen of the South 0 Callum Higginbottom with the goal for them uh, at Celtic Park Joe Hart's come outside of his box nearly made a bit of a mess of it half tackles Johnny Hayes Ramadani had a shot small claims for a handball but it wasn't a handball and Kyogo is going to come on told you um, if when Joe the ball gets to Joe Hart's feet you should put both hands over both eyes uh, he's not the best at that uh, but Kyogo now coming on with a chance of scoring and equaling the number of goals scored by the entire Ross County squad a chance at each end at Livingston against Rangers Stephen Kelly wide from Nicky Devlin's cross that's been Livingston's best chance of the game however uh, Rangers had a chance just after that a good save from Shamal George from Ryan Kent after Rangers hit them on the break that's a, da that's a dangerous scoreline just now um, you know I think that Michael Beale will be standing there hoping that he can get the, the other goal that just puts it a little bit more comfortable for Rangers uh, Livingston still very much in the game at home uh, uh, you well highlighted the pitch so Rangers have just got to be careful here can't afford to as much as we all agree I think the Celtic will go and win the league but they just can't afford to drop any more points Cove Rangers 1 are both nil Leighton McIntosh with the goal for them to put them ahead Dunfermline have equalised against Airdrie Nikolai Todorov scoring as well there was a chance uh, Guion Edwards just over a decent effort for Ross County who it was from a free kick they've been looking better certainly in this second half Ross County 
very for Celtic and Rangers today. You know, Celtic two up after 13 minutes, and since then nothing. Uh, Rangers a penalty, and they're well into the match now, and nothing other than that. Uh, you know, the possession, yes. Penetration, no. Right, Hugh, give us that teaser again because I think people are maybe struggling. Oh, <laughs> well, those people do not include Mark Wilson and David Field. I have played alongside Kenny Miller and Robert Snodgrass. I have been managed by Neil Warnock and Lee Clark. I won both Scottish Domestic Cups, but only played in one of the finals. I have played for f- clubs in five countries across three continents. Who am I? Jack McLean says Frank Sozzi. No. And see, I can't really see too many... I can't really see any correct answers so far. Correct? Making your, None. Yeah, not really... Well, you, didn't, in, you didn't get it either, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, After well, you'd looked at Mark's paper, what he's written down. To be fair, no we clue. both we both guessed the first one, right? Which was wrong. I grant you that. And then we sort of uh, worked out the second one, and Mark wrote it down, and took the credit. <laughs> you can see that at Clyde SSB if you want to see it written down. If that helps at all, uh, Kamar Roof coming on for Rangers. Fashion Sakala off. He had the ball on the back of the net in the first half, but that one didn't count. Charlie McGrew has had a header cleared off the line following a corner. Dundee United getting closer as they push for that equaliser. Well, even a point would be something. Uh, but, you know, the, the the drama will continue. If they if they lose today, they'll still be rock bottom. And uh, things are not getting any easier. A, would they make a change to their hue if they lost today? Do you know what I was going to say to you earlier on when we, we were discussing this? You would have to contemplate that, I think. And Tam Courts is there and available. Now, whatever you can say about Tam Courts, he made the wrong decision going uh, to Hungary. It, it was all over very soon. He applied for the job at Bromby. Didn't get it. I wonder if there might be a temptation to say, come in and save us from the drop. Well, Mark Ogren is here all week. So he's seeing it up close and personal, well, you wonder. He, he, listen, he's the owner. Was he here for a reason? Well, he was here to look at budgets for next season. Now, at the moment, he doesn't know which division he'll be in next season. So it's very, very complicated. And I just wonder, and you know, it's an awful part of this job to discuss a man's employment. But it happens all the time. We're getting closer and closer to, you know, managers just don't get many games. Ask Stevie Hamill. Ask Jack Ross at Dundee United. Ask Sean Maloney when he was at Hibs. They must be getting to the crossroads where they're thinking, could Tam Coach actually come back here and save us from the going down? Kamar Ruth with a chance not long after coming off the bench. It was inches wide. Todd Cantwell with the pass to him. Dylan Smith coming on for Ross County for Connor Randall. 16 years old. Dylan Smith born 21st of June 2006. 2006 oh, my god what were you doing 2006 <laughs> Saturday I usually get married on Saturday <laughs> I've got two grandchildren older than that that's quite something so Dylan Smith on as Ross County who seemed to have been better in the second half so far David Friel said it was getting a bit feisty tackles flying in didn't use the word scrappy though Gordon you'll be glad to hear yeah I sort of forced um, David into that I'm fed up listening to uh, every single week he gives it four minutes and then comments on the game. Let the game flow. Um, I was excited about the game at Paisley today. And I'm quite right. It's a good game. And I'm glad David's enjoying it. With Clyde Built Home Improvements. Celtic 3, Aberdeen 0. Rayo Hatati with the goal. And if it wasn't over already, it's certainly over now. Four goals in two games for Rayo Hatati. Uh, he is on fire. And, you know, much was made of Aaron Moy not being in the team today or even on the subs bench. But Hatati's had a breather and he's come back in style. Yeah, he's, I mean, Moy's been terrific recent weeks. Kyogo takes the headlines because of his goals, but I think Hatati's the constant. Just unbelievably technical player, goal scoring midfielder, can mix it when he needs it, can play a number of positions. You seen him playing right back this year as well. Just a, a top, top footballer and before anyone says try to sell him on, it's just a natural progression. Teams before long will look at him down south, 
and and maybe take an ball. The, the biggest the biggest th- uh, argument you'll have if you look at that Celtic midfield, it's very very strong. If I was picking my best three, it'd be Moy, Hatati, and McGregor. Goal flashes with Clyde built home improvements. I was wondering why there was some movement sort of in my peripheral vision over to the left and that's because Dundee United have scored. Yes. Producer Callum is delighted and Dylan Levitt has the goal for them. They're back in this game, one all, and that could be huge because St Johnston are a team who would have gone 10 points clear of them if they'd won today. And I mean, they aren't really the team that Dundee United are chasing at the moment. They've got Ross County, Kilmarnock and Motherwell ahead of them. But with Ross County losing, Kilmarnock losing as well, Motherwell playing tomorrow, if Dundee United can get anything, that would be big for them. Well, Tam Courts, put your mobile phone back in your pocket. There's no point in phoning now. <laughs> Dylan Lever, good player. Very, very good player. See, that's the spirit, spirit of 83 there, coming yeah. shining through. Yeah, they, they probably matched them up and down the corridors, looked to the, the spirit of 83. <laughs> I'm sorry, how about this? <laughs> Please. Goal flashes. <laughs> With Clyde-built home improvements. <laughs> Dundee United 1, St Johnston 2. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Stevie May has scored his second of the game oh, this oh, how, uh, You want to know the worst thing is The way that this was communicated was With Dundee United being at home Dave Galloway's told us it was a quick goal He's written 2-1 with the 2 first <laughs> As if Dundee United have scored <laughs> And then he said bundled in by May Producer Callum was celebrating over there oh, and then he just saw the word zipper. me and he's uh-huh. devastated. Absolutely devastated. The, f- the 40-year-old track shoots go ripped right off him and thrown in the That's your leading <laughs> present from Dave Galloway there. Tam, Tam oh, Courts. Get your phone back on. Phone back on 01382 <laughs> for Dundee. Oh, what a signal of that, especially if you're Dundee United, you're back in the game, you're at home, the fans are right behind you, go on and win the game, be positive, wow, loser. He's just a nemesis, isn't he, Stevie May, for Dundee United, throughout the years, he's just he's the man that does them he's, all the time. He's Scottish, I don't think he comes from nemesis. Very hard working player, Stevie May, the only thing that was missing from his game, and he's added it this afternoon, for me, was goals. He wasn't a prolific goal scorer, but he certainly worked his, his shift. Look at that John Rankin story. Hamilton are now two up at Inverness Cali this yeah, John Pierre Tihi with the goal. And Cove Rangers are one up on our broth. So the Aki's now going the same points if it stays this way. And John Rankin has come from nowhere and they continue to rise. Well done, Ranks. Curtis Main has hit the post, a deflected effort. St Mirren trying to double their lead against Ross County, unable to do so. Curtis Main going close. He was one of the players that was rated as very, very doubtful to play today by Stephen Robinson. They don't have Keanu Bacchus. They don't have Alex Gogic. They don't have Alex Grieve. They don't have a couple of other players. Scott Tanzer's injured at the moment. Jonah Ayunga's injured at the moment. They've got quite a few kids on the bench. I think it's five or six academy graduates that... Um, they've got on the on the bench today, but they'll do well to get the victory with a, a threadbare squad. Well, they've got minutes left, and let's see uh, Stephen Robinson's credit. Oh no, what's happened? In fact, VAR review with Clyde Built Home Improvements. It seems to be ages after the Stevie May goal. No. However, come on, no. there seems to be a delay in this one. We'll wait and see whether the goal will stand or not. I told you, VAR in Scotland means how can we rule out this goal? And they look at it from all angles and try and come up with any flimsy explanation for disallowing a goal. Mockery of football, scrap it. Livingston have a real task on their hands because Stefan Omionga has been sent off. Livingston down to 10 men They're a goal down to Rangers Stefan Omeonga is off I'll get more details on that shortly But a what's, red card for the midfielder What's going on at Tanaday so with this check? Play Can resumes we... Goal stands St Johnston 2-1 oh. up And the United think... have it all to do They were only level for what a minute I think it was uh, Second bookable offence I think it was For Stefan Omeonga A foul on Kamar Roof He's off and Rangers will hope that they can put that game to bed with another goal or two in the final stages of this game. Interesting though, as I say, you know, they've got a penalty, they've scored from that, and 
not much else going on for them. So interesting to hear Michael Beale's take on that game. Uh, he's been pretty consistent, Hugh, since the time he's took over. Well, he said last week. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Livingston nil, Rangers two, and it's James Tavernier. It's another set piece. This one, a free kick. James Tavernier curls that one in, right footed from just slightly to the left. You think that's prime position, really, for James Tavernier? He steps up, takes, and scores. And with Rangers playing against 10 men, 2 0 up away to Livingston, surely that will be all three points. Oh, yeah, that's finished. Now, when Marvin Bartley comes in here on Wednesday, I don't Ooh. want any of you speaking to him. Is you losing and about Callum Kelty. Higginbottom has scored Kelty Hearts 3 0 up now. <sighs> How this is the man who takes it badly when he loses beat the pundit this is one to watch out for as well because Joshua Ray has been sent off for Airdrie the Airdrie goalkeeper Airdrie do not do well when they go down to 10 men we saw that last last week week. it's happened earlier on in the season the the collapse last week was spectacular they were 3-0 up got a man sent off lost 4-3 um, they've had Joshua Ray sent off now Matt was there when they didn't do well with 11 men were you not there as well? No, I was oh, there. No, I was there, Andrew. I was here. Washing his hands. In fact, well, I, I, in my defence, I did everything you asked me. What yeah. about that one for the English Championship? Nottingham Forest, five minutes to go. We equalise against Manchester City shortly after Arsenal went to Aston Villa and even Tom Hanks couldn't help Aston Villa and Arsenal won 4-2, so it's... Ding dong there. Yeah, it would be big for Arsenal if Manchester City dropped points. There is a change for Rangers after that second goal. Alfredo Morelos comes off and Antonio Cholak comes on. So you'd think that Alfredo Morelos just being rested with next Sunday in mind for the final few minutes of this game. What is there, maybe about 15 to go in that match? Although they've got a full week. I mean, you guys have been there on the park. Um, when you've got a full week, do you really need to be rested? Uh, no, nah, just in case you pick up an awk or anything like you. Before the cup finals, I used to get subbed very early. Um, I didn't want any knocks or any problems for the following week's cup final. So Hold on. I can totally understand it. They're about to rule out the Nottingham Forest goal, the dreaded VAR. Oh. <sighs> There was a VAR check. I'm not sure whether it has been ruled out or not. Looked as if the goal maybe stood there. Uh, Five minutes to go. Mockery of football. In that game. Uh, Any chances? Uh, Hatate curling one. Right-hand corner again. Doesn't go in. And he won't complete his hat-trick because he's now coming off Rio Hatate. We're both back in the game. Look at John Rankin. Anyway. Stays bottom. But only by a point this time. Yeah, I, I think Hamilton could certainly overtake a broth. It's amazing the differences in season. Last last year, Dick Campbell, a broth up there challenging for promotion, now fighting to save his team from relegation. So you'll see Olasanya scoring for a broth that goal. He's on loan from St Mirren. Hibbs nearly scoring a third. Matthew Hopp should have scored, really. A turn in the six yard box, scuffed shot that was saved by the feet of Sam Walker. It's still 2 up in that game. Kilmarnock down to 10 men. If Ross County get an equaliser, I would have all five of my predictions up. Ross mm. County? When Does was the it? last time you got all your predictions right on a Saturday afternoon? I think um, probably just after the war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, Andrew, yeah. your knowledge of players and where they've came from and injuries is second to none. Been impressed with that today. What was it I said there that triggered that? The the boy at Fairbrook. So you'll see Olasanya, one loan from St Mirren. Had a toe injury for the first half of the season. Now, now you're uh, showing off. Didn't now play for them and then was shipped out on loan in January. Aye, oh, big goal for that. Hamilton as well. Connor Smith with a penalty in the 87th minute. Give me the bag that game on Connor Smith. Is done yeah. and dusted. We'll move on from that, shall we? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Birigetti was injured, uh, replaced by Newman in goal for Dundee United. So there is a change for them between the sticks is his name actually Newman because that's that's in my day that yeah. was a sub you come on on for on for someone is number 12 Newman and there I was running on when I was well, a that, young they would just announce it as Newman, Newman that comes on yeah Newman Newman really 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. And enter the pitch, number 12, new man. What, did they just not have the information of who was coming on? They couldn't pronounce my name. Um, no, but that's what happened in the old days, yeah. I'll tell you. New yeah. man. New man. Oh, well, it is Jack Newman, not right. new man, who is... Oh, it's Gordon Newman. Come man. on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, and he came. Anyway, it's a blow for... John Rankin to have a bro score that belated equaliser but he's still continuing uh, in a good direction the, the, keep your eye on them they may not be the victims of demotion that they looked earlier on the full time whistles are approaching maybe we should round this one off you ok the second half teaser with the scottish sun.co.uk slash football for the best football news and opinion online I have played alongside Kenny Miller and Robert Snodgrass. I've been managed by Neil Warnock and Lee Clark. I won both Scottish Domestic Cups, but only played in one of the finals. I have played for clubs in five countries across three continents. I am Darren O'Dee. Darren O'Dee. Mark Wilson got that one quickly, as did David Friel. And there is a full podium as well. In third place, it's David L, who got in there. Roof RFC in second place. But in first place, top of the tree is Neil Potter, well done to you, Neil Potter. You win the bragging rights for the second half teaser. So it can't be too long to go in these Premiership games either. Where are there a bit of potential action at the end? Can Dundee United get an equaliser after uh, going 2 1 down to St Johnston elsewhere? Ross County will really be pushing to try and get a goal in that game. There is a change, Stevie May off. For Zach Rudden, who comes on for St. Andrew, Johnson. Andrew, on that, scene st- Oh, OK. Goal flashes with Clyde Bills Home Improvements. I did ask, where was the late drama? It's not really late drama. It's Celtic scoring a fourth. They're 4-0 up against Aberdeen. Leal Abada off the bench. It was cut back by Hak Sabanovic. Left-footed, hammered in. Goalkeeper got a hand to it. And we've got another one of these. Goal flashes. With Clyde Built Home Improvements. Celtic and Rangers both making it convincing towards the end. Kemar Roof, he was also off the bench, a close range finish after a bit of a scramble. Roger Hanna saying that Kemar Roof has been excellent since he came on. So you wonder how close he'll be to the starting 11 for Sunday. Well, the, 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 maybe not the starting 11, but if you've got Cholak, Kemar Roof, and Morelos. You have uh, danger in triplicate for Celtic in the cup final. And before anyone asks, Rangers have danger in triplicate from uh, Jota, Abada, Kyogo. And if you want to go even further, Maeda. Actually interesting because the last time we said earlier that Celtic and Rangers both played at three o'clock in separate games yeah. on a Saturday Celtic won five nil. Rangers won four nil. It could could replicate it if they both get a goal in an in injury time. Well, I would be quite happy with their day's work now. Uh, it looks and sounds convincing. Seven uh, nil on aggregate against Aberdeen and Livingston. Um, now, as I say, forget about league football. The curtain goes up on Panto season. Now we have the running to the first cup final of the season and at five o'clock we have the first of the we will do this to them calls well the ten men of Kilmarnock trying to push to get back into that one Scott Robinson shot cleared off the line by Egan Riley four minutes of stoppage time there but they would need to claw back two goals and also are down to ten men as well so that seems very unlikely that they'll get anything out of that game uh, yeah St Mirren Ross County the big one as well as Dundee United St Johnston the goal, a, the a goal at Tanadice Andrew, Callum over there. the goal at Tanadice to make it 2-1 is one of the worst goals a team has ever conceded in their life wait till you see this balls pass back it to the goalkeeper pass back to the goalkeeper and he Stevie May essentially just slide tackles but again, but again, on, he, on he? the goal line he takes yeah. a touch I don't know what he's thinking uh, it's horrendous when well, you I'm assuming it, that was the could... incident that Birigetti got injured in as well because he ended up coming off but it was a clean tackle by, yeah. by Stevie May no complaints there as Rude Hill said all those years ago goalkeepers are goalkeepers because they can't play football Ooh. VAR Review with Clyde Built Home Improvements
A VAR check at the Smyza Stadium. David Friel thinks it's a Wura Edwards for a potential red card. Uh, tried to get a loose ball in the box. That one will get looked at. We do have our first full time, though. It's at Celtic Park. Gabriel? Yes, it's all over here, Andrew, and it's Celtic 4, Abri 0. The Rayo Hatate show here once again. His two brilliant goals guided in hoops to three points. His strikes bookended by goals from Cal McGregor and Leal Abada. It was the perfect start for the defending champions given to them by McGregor. He scored in the final minute of the game the last time these two sides met. This time round, it only took him two minutes. The ball popped out to their captain, who hammered in a volley just inside the box. The keeper couldn't get a strong enough hand to it. In the 15th minute, Rayo Hatate received the ball on the edge, shimmied in the box, curled it into the far corner. He just looked untouchable then, and he looked untouchable for the entire game. Celtic were all over the dons. Dyson Maida could have had a hatch in the first half of chances that he just couldn't get on the end of. Celtic attackers literally playing one-twos in the Don's box despite the numerous red shirts packing out the area. And the Hoops thought they had a penalty just before the interval, but VAR rightly ruled it out for an offside in the build-up. The second half was naturally a bit more flat to start with. Ameda and O'Reilly had half chances. Celtic were playing well, moving the ball nicely, but not really threatening enough. That changed when Hitate uh, took the game by the scruff of the neck, again getting his second with 15 minutes to play. He rolled the ball between two players, not made a pass through another, gave the ball to McGregor, who tried to force a pass through to Kyogo. It bounced back to Hitate, who had continued his run uh, into the box, took a touch and just curled it into the right-hand corner again, making it look so, so easy. I said Haksabanovic had come off the bench. He hammered a few shots wide late on, then set up the final goal, firing the ball across Leal Abada, who swept it in with his left foot, rounding off the scoring. Kyogo Furuhashi played the last 20 minutes, which will be seen as crucial ahead of next weekend's League Cup final with Rangers. The Dons, the visitors, were poor here and offered little, but Celtic were excellent once again. They have now won nine in a row and maintained that nine-point gap at the top of the league before the showdown at Hamden in eight days' time. Full-time here, Celtic 4, Aberdeen 0. Well, it is the only full-time score in the Premiership so far. There was that VAR check at the Smyza Stadium and Awura Edwards is off. Straight red card and Ross County down to 10 men. They're a goal down and it will be tough for them to get back into this game. And injury time, there is a triple change for Rangers. James Sands, Scott Wright and 16-year-old Bailey Rice coming on for them we do have a full time this one is at Easter Road Fraser Wishart yeah I finished Kilmarnock uh, sorry Hibernian 2 Kilmarnock nil, and really pretty comfortable for Hibernian they were excellent in the first half Will Fish with the opener in 16 minutes and after sub Matthew Hopp scored 2 minutes in the second half the game was pretty much over but a stroll to 3 points especially after Kelly Stryker Kyle Vassell was shown a red card by John Beaton after a VAR check Hibs complete domination of the first 45 minutes only one up and could have been further ahead at the break the goal came in 16 minutes Magidi a really good outswinging corner kick to the front post Will Fish 8 yards out found space and powered a header high into the back of the net. Kelly keeper Sam Walker kept it at one at the break. Series of good saves, the best from Yuan and Henderson. And Henderson also saw a shot cleared off the line by Chris Stokes. There was no threat really from Kilmar and Derek McInnes made three changes to try and liven things up at half time. Pull with Taylor Robinson on, but it was Hibbs that got that second goal just a couple of minutes into the half. James Jago did really well in the inside right position in the penalty box. His low cross into the six yard box, not cleared by Ash Taylor and it fell nicely to sub Matthew Hall with a simple task to fire home from three yards his first goal for the club Kelly actually responded pretty well had the best spell of the game Liam Polworth as he shot goal bound is blocked in the six yard box and Mackenzie brought out a good save from Marshall it was then back to Hibs being on top Matthew Hall with a powerful shot just inches wide from 20 yards Walker was beaten and then Kelly's day got, went from bad to worse in the 67th minute, Kyle Vassell was shown a straight red card after a VAR check. The ball bounced high. He was actually in possession of the ball. The ball bounced high. He raised his foot to control the ball. He caught Carbaja. And ref John Beaton, who was a couple of yards away, showed the yellow card. Stephen Kirtland, the VAR referee, told John Beaton to go to the screen. And he, the referee changed his mind to a red card. It was a strange incident because nobody in the ground was really screaming for a red card, including the players or the supporters. But the striker was off. The rest of the game just petered out. He was comfortable knocking the ball around. Kelly 10 men just couldn't get on the ball and Hawks should have scored his second turn inside the six yard box he scuffed his left foot shot and was saved by the feet of Walker and Scott Robinson the final, on the final act of the game almost got a consolation goal did really well inside the penalty box rolled the ball low past Marshall but Conrad Egan Riley the big defender had got back in place to kick the ball off the line Hibs unbeaten run 
in the league is now six games and they jump into fourth place only five points behind the big rivals Hearts. but Derry McInnes somehow needs to find a way to improve their way forward if they're going to stay in the Premiership 14 games five goals and only two points this season full time Easter Road to Bernie 2 Kilmarnock 0 Four minutes added at the Tony Macaroni Arena. If St Mirren's injury problems weren't bad already, Declan Gallagher is down in a heap. Looks as if he's pulled his hamstring. That is not a good one for Stephen Robinson. There is another full time as well. That one is at Tannadice, Dave Galloway. Yes, Dundee United 1, St Johnson 2. Dundee United quickly out of the traps. Behitch's shot saved by the legs of Matthews. Doom blazed over from outside the box and Levitt sliced wide from the edge of the D. St Johnson came more into things. McPherson saw his low shot easily saved by Berigiti and Montgomery's dangerous ball in was just beyond May. The home side had the lion's share of possession but there were chances at both ends and Saints took the lead in the 32nd minute. Halberg crossed for May to score with a first-time shot from close range. Play swung from end to end in the second half. Clark's turn and shot saved by Birigiti at the other end. Sybil's header was cleared off the line following a corner. United equalised with a quite brilliant goal on 81 minutes. An exquisite drive by Levitt from outside the box into the bottom corner of the net. But they shot themselves in the foot less than a minute later. Saints went 2-1 ahead. Birigiti didn't look at all clever when receiving Mulgrew's back pass and May pounced to find the net. Net. Then uh, Berigiti, just to rub salt into the wounds, also had to go off injured. So celebrations for the large travelling support here at Tanadice, but misery for bottom of the league United. It finished Dundee United 1, St Johnston 2. Yeah, a big result for St Johnston there. Dundee United throwing that one. I mean, the goal, we've all seen the goal now. It's spectacularly bad on the part of Dundee United. Mark Berigiti controls the ball about, what, two yards off his own line? And Stevie May just slide tackles him into the net. Schoolboy stuff that I mean it's yeah. uh, d- when you're at the bottom of the table first and foremost you need to be solid at the back you do not want your goalkeeper taking any chances especially when you've got yourself back in the game trouble at Tanadice I just wonder what's round the corner for Liam Fox owner over might be a crucial time for them to make a change but, but as in the case of Stevie Hamill last weekend it has to be straight away you've got no time to mess about if it's there, what, in your mind do it now Full time at the Tony Macaroni Arena, Roger Hanna. Livingston nil, Rangers 3, a routine afternoon for Michael Beals men as they warm up for next week's League Cup final at hand in two goals, one in either half from captain James Tavernier and then a third near the end from the very impressive substitute Kemar Roof. Keeps Rangers within nine points of the runaway leader Celtic. Actually, I think we've lost Roger Hanna there. There has been technical difficulties all day. We'll maybe see if we can go back to him to get the full-time picture. We will get the full-time picture from the Smyza Stadium with David Freel. Full-time, Andrew St Mirren won Ross County now. St Mirren have now won nine of the 15 home matches this season. What a record that is, but this will surely rank as one of the best for Stephen Robinson. They were decimated by injury, but Declan Gallagher's goal gave him a massive three points. St Mirren are now above Livingston in the fifth, and I think Stephen Robinson's only kit is as and will be that they didn't score more goals. Gallagher grabbed a win on seven minutes when he headed in Ryan Strain's corner. St Mirren had the best of the first half. They definitely deserved that lead, but County did improve after the break. Malcolm Mackay didn't miss a boot at half-time. He threw on Uwura Edwards, Guion Edwards and Ross Callaghan, they all made a difference. Aurora Edwards did have a big penalty claim turned down after being barged over by Trevor Carson. But it was Simon who created the best chances of the second half. Tony Watt fired over, Curtis Main hit the post, Rod Laid- Ross Laidlaw then made an incredible double save from Kieran Offord and Ryan Strain. County though kept going, they did have a late chance when Guion Edwards' low shot was saved by Carson. The ball rebounded into the middle of the box. Aurora Edwards tried to tackle it over the line basically, but his challenge earned him a red card after a VAR check. So overall, a huge win for St Mirren, but it maybe came a cost again. Declan Gallagher, the big centre half, he went gallop- galloping up the left wing on a, on a break, but pulled his hamstring just to add to their injury woes. Full time, St Mirren won, Ross County nil. And yeah, that is the roundup of the full time scores. Let's try and go back to Roger Hanna, is he there? Yes, I'm here, Andrew. Livingston nil, Rangers 3, as we were saying. A goal in either half from James Tavernier, then one near the end from substitute Kemar Roof, easing Rangers to victory. They could have been ahead in 10 minutes. Fashion Sakala had a goal at the near post ruled out correctly for offside, and then Rangers got a penalty correctly via VAR midway through the half. James Penn raised the culprit at the back post, clearly pulling Alfredo Morelos' jersey as they went for a high ball. 
Oh well, that's the last time we even try and go to Roger Hanna, go and interview the managers. But we got a lot of the full time picture there, and now it's time to hear from you. Oh one four one nine five one one zero two five. Celtic fans, Rangers fans, what did you make of that performance today? The cup final is next weekend. Have you got any thoughts heading into that? Were there any players in particular that impressed you that should be playing in that game? Dundee United fans, we want to know what you think after. You know, levelling against St Johnston and then not being able to hold on. Not a good afternoon for Kilmarnock or Ross County either. And St Mirren back to winning ways. And of course, there's still the managerial situation at Motherwell. So they play tomorrow against Hearts. Motherwell fans, we want to hear from you as well. 